Welcome to Yankee Stadium and the 79th Major League Baseball All-Star Game. The fourth and final All-Star Game to be played at this historic ballpark. On the field are the National and American League All-Stars. And gathering by the left field monuments is one of the greatest collections of Hall of Famers ever assembled. Moments ago, Hall of Fame shortstop Ernie Banks addressed the National League All-Stars. They'll see this game all over the world. And you can be out there playing and just having a good time. That's all it is to it. Nothing else. Nothing else. And it's fun to win. And it's time for us to do that. It's time for us to win. And it's nothing like winning this game. This is an important game. And everybody's watching. The National League is watching. And everybody, all of us are watching. All the Hall of Fame people are here at the game and looking and, and watching all of you play. Thank you, Ernie. To go off script for one moment, we all know that only one man should be announcing these names here tonight. The man whose voice has been bouncing off these walls for 58 years, Bob Shepard. Bob is not feeling well. He's been recuperating at home, and I know it would mean a lot to him if the fans here at Yankee Stadium let him hear how much you appreciate what he has meant to this stadium and this great organization. And now, let's meet the best of the senior circuit, the National League All-Stars. First, the coaches. From the Chicago Cubs, Lou Pinella. From the San Diego Padres, Bud Black. And now the players from the Arizona Diamondbacks, Dan Heron and Brandon Webb. From the Atlanta Braves, Brian McCann. From the Chicago Cubs, Alfonso Soriano. Ramos Ramirez, Kerry Wood, Carlos Zambrano, Ryan Dempster, and Carlos Marmol. From the Cincinnati Reds, Edinson Volquez. From the Colorado Rockies, Aaron Cook. From the Florida Marlins, Dan Ugla. From the Houston Astros, Miguel Tejada. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, Russell Martin. From the Milwaukee Brewers, Corey Hart. From the New York Mets, David Wright. And Billy Wagner. From the Philadelphia Phillies, Brad Lidge. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, Nate McLeod. From the St. Louis Cardinals, Ryan Ludwig. From the San Diego Padres, Adrian Gonzalez. From the San Francisco Giants, Brian Wilson. From the Washington Nationals, Christian Guzman. Before we meet the American League All-Stars, let's hear what Hall of Famer George Brett said to them before they took the field tonight. Played 20 years in the American League. Played in 13 All-Star games. And every time I get around the Mike Schmitz and the Pete Roses and the Johnny Benches of the world, they remind me that we won one time in 13 years. Now you guys are on a streak. You guys have won 11 years in a row. And the game means something now. Back then it didn't mean diddly. But it means something now. To some people in this room, they're going to have home field advantage in the World Series, and we all know how important that is. So go out there, Terry. Play the game with respect. Don't try to be a hero. Try to be a winner. Thank you, George. And now let's meet the American League All-Star team. The coaches from the Detroit Tigers, Jim Leland. From the New York Yankees, Joe Girardi. And 
now the players from the Baltimore Orioles, George Gerald. From the Boston Red Sox, J.D. Drew. Jason Veritek. David Ortiz. And Jonathan Papelbon. From the Chicago White Sox, Carlos Quinton. And Joe Creedy. From the Cleveland Indians, Grady Sizemore. From the Detroit Tigers, Carlos Guillen. From the Kansas City Royals, Joaquin Soria. From the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, Joe Saunders. Urban Santana. And Francisco Rodriguez. From the Minnesota Twins, Justin Morno and Joe Nathan. From the Oakland Athletics, Justin Duckshear. From the Tampa Bay Rays, Evan Longoria. Scott Kazmir. And Deonor Navarro. From the Texas Rangers, Ian Kinsler. And Michael Young. From the Toronto Blue Jays, Roy Halladay. And from the New York Yankees, Mariano Rivera. What an ovation for Mariano Rivera. We continue on from the Bronx in Yankee Stadium. A peek into Monument Park. Whitey Ford looking at the plaques. Willie McCovey is here. Just some of the names who will be introduced to this crowd here at Yankee Stadium in moments. You saw Ernie Banks, Cal Ripken Jr., Eddie Murray, Ozzy Smith. When we come back, we introduce the Hall of Famers and tonight's starting lineups. And welcome back to the Chevy All-Star pregame show on Fox, Chevy, and American Revolution. On this latest of so many unforgettable evenings at Yankee Stadium, we are almost set to meet the 2008 National League and American League starters. But on this spectacular night in the Bronx, your All-Stars receive a unique honor guard. As today's best take their positions, they will be joined by the living immortals of Cooperstown. It is only fitting that 49 Hall of Famers congregate tonight at this cathedral of baseball and take center stage at this final All-Star Game celebration in Yankee Stadium. First, as always, we hand the ball to the pitchers. Each one an ace, every one a Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Carlton. Dennis Eckersley. Bob Feller. Raleigh Fingers. Bob Gibson. Ferguson Jenkins. Juan Marichal. Phil Negro. Jim Palmer. Gaylord Perry. Robin Roberts. Bruce Souter. Don Sutton. Goose Gossage. And 
and Whitey Ford. And now the starting pitcher for the National League from the Milwaukee Brewers, Ben Sheets. And the starting pitcher for the American League from the Cleveland Indians, Cliff Lee. Now we head around the horn at first base, a quintet of legends. Orlando Cepeda. Harmon Killebrew. Eddie Murray. Tony Perez. And Willie McCovey. They are joined by tonight's starting first baseman. For the National League, from the Houston Astros, Lance Berkman. And for the American League, from the Boston Red Sox, Kevin Euclid. We continue and move to second base. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rod Carew. Bill Mazeroski. And Ryan Sandberg. Joining them are tonight's starting second baseman. For the National League, from the Philadelphia Phillies, Chase Utley. And for the American League, from the Boston Red Sox, Dustin Pedroia. Now we head over to the hot corner in some of the game's greatest third baseman. Brooks Robinson. Mike Schmidt. George Brett. And Wade Boggs. They are joined by tonight's starting third baseman for the National League from the Atlanta Braves, Chipper Jones. For the American League from the New York Yankees, Alex Rodriguez. to the shortstop position. Home here in Yankee Stadium to the late great scooter, Phil Rizzuto. Tonight, we hail these greats, Louis Aparicio, Ozzie Smith, Robin Yount, Ernie Banks. And Cal Ripken Jr. Joining them are tonight's starting shortstops for the National League from the Florida Marlins, Hanley Ramirez.
for the American League from the New York Yankees, Derek Jeter. Next up, we go out by second base, where he hits so many career doubles. Please welcome Hall of Fame designated hitter Paul Molitor. He is joined by tonight's starting DHs for the National League from the St. Louis Cardinals, Albert Pujols. And for the American League, from the Texas Rangers, Milton Bradley. And now we turn our attention to the greats who patrol the outfield. In left, a trio of Hall of Famers, Lou Brock. Billy Williams. And Ralph Kiner. Joining them are tonight's starting left fielders for the National League from the Milwaukee Brewers, Ryan Braun. And for the American League from the Boston Red Sox, Manny Ramirez. swath of acreage in center field one of the true giants of baseball <laughs> Willie Mays He is joined by tonight's starting center fielders for the National League from the Chicago Cubs, Kosuke Fukudome. And for the American League from the Texas Rangers, a hero last night in the Derby, Josh Hamilton. Now we move to right field and more legends of the outfield. Tony Gwynn. Al Kaline. Frank Robinson. Dave Winfield. Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Joining them are tonight's starting right fielders for the National League from the Colorado Rockies, Matt Holliday.
And for the American League, from the Seattle Mariners, Ichiro Suzuki. From the best in the outfield, we turn to the best in the dugout. Behind home plate, please welcome a trio of Hall of Fame managers. Earl Weaver. Tommy Lasorda. And Dick Williams. And representing the best of baseball's front office personnel, they are joined by Hall of Fame executive Lee McPhail. They are joined by tonight's all-star managers. The National League manager from the 2007 National League champion Colorado Rockies, Clint Hurdle. And the American League manager from the 2007 World Series champion Boston Red Sox, Terry Francona. And we stay at home plate to recognize some of the game's great catchers. Please welcome the starting catchers for the National League from the Chicago Cubs, Giovanni Soto. And for the American League, from the Minnesota Twins, Joe Maurer. Joining them behind home plate tonight, a couple of Hall of Fame catchers, Gary Carter. Yogi Berra. Gentlemen, this majestic ballpark has provided the backdrop for many great baseball moments. But tonight is a first, even for this grand arena. It is my privilege to present to you here in the house at Ruth built Yankee Stadium, the greatest collection of baseball's all stars ever assembled on one field. take a break on Fox when we come back the national anthem and we continue prior to the 79th all-star game from Yankee Stadium and again welcome back to the Chevy all-star pregame show on Fox Chevy and American Revolution And now to honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Please welcome nine time Grammy Award winner and AM recording artist, Cheryl Crow. Oh,
Thank you, Cheryl Crow. As this year's All-Star teams get ready for tonight's game, our Hall of Famers come to the Yankee Stadium pitcher's mound one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are honored to have a very special guest deliver the baseballs to the pitcher's mound for the ceremonial first pitch. Please direct your attention now to left field and welcome the boss, Mr. George Steinbrenner. moment here at Yankee Stadium as George Steinbrenner is brought to the center of this diamond a franchise that he has run and owned since 1973 bought it for ten million dollars and has turned this into an empire and here he is on this night Tuesday July 15th 2008 prior to the 79th Major League Baseball All-Star Game. And now to throw out the ceremonial first pitch for tonight's All-Star Game. Surrounded by their Hall of Fame brethren, here are the men who will forever wear a Yankees hat on their plaque in Cooperstown. Reggie Jackson, Goose Gossage, Whitey Ford, and Yogi Berra. Ceremonial first pitch. From those four to Mariano Rivera, Joe Girardi, Derek Jeter, and Alex Rodriguez. As we get ready to play ball here at Yankee Stadium, and Yogi wants them to move closer. Yogi just keeps one, he just wants to walk closer. Let him walk as close as he wants. He'll throw to Girardi. A fitting ending to a stirring pregame ceremony. Not only a celebration of the game's greatest players, but a touching all-star tribute to Yankee Stadium. As the Hall of Famers exit this field for the final time, let's hear it once again for these baseball legends. When we come back, we will set up this All-Star game, the 2008 version here in the Bronx. The Chevy All-Star pregame show on Fox, sponsored by Chevy and American Revolution. By the new AT&T, your world delivered. And by Sharp Aquas LCD TVs. Change your TV, change your life. Up above on what is an absolutely beautiful night, 
The aerial coverage is brought to you by the DirecTV HD Starship. Get over 130 of your favorite channels in HD this summer. And now welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. I am Joe Buck. Tim McCarver and countless others are coming your way in just a moment. Well, we can only hope whether you were here at Yankee Stadium or up in the booth or at home watching that this game can measure up to what we just witnessed down on the field here at Yankee Stadium. And Tim, we'll talk, I'm sure, as we go along in this game about what we just witnessed out there and, and what it means to you. But I, to talk specifically about this game, the National League has not won the All-Star game since 1996. And yet you look at their lineup tonight, and I think they're in a position to score some runs well from a personal health standpoint everyone knows that you have to have a strong core and if that's the case the National League is very very healthy this evening because their core their three four and five hitters are the leading hitters from a batting average standpoint in the major leagues Lance Berkman Albert Pujols and Chipper Jones but you and I both agree that that may be good yes but pitching wise on the American League side you better get at the AL early because at the end of the ball game they'll just shut you down well I mean the the four short relievers for the American League are lights out Francisco Rodriguez leads the majors in saves with 38 followed by Jonathan Papelbon Joe Nathan and Mariano Rivera but you're exactly right they have to get to them early oh, and by the way Mariano Rivera is not starting this game and Terry Francona told us before tonight's action if there is a save situation here in the house where he has starred year after year Mariano Rivera will get the baseball to try and get the save. So here we go, Yankee Stadium, the 79th Major League Baseball All-Star Game. This place built in 1923. It's been the host of many historic events. Whether it's Don Larson's perfect game in 1956, Mr. October's three home runs in game six of 77. Three All-Star Games, tonight will be the fourth. Many Hall of Famers have roamed these hallways and walked this field. And many more will tonight. We're glad you're with us. Up next, on the other side of the break, baseball. It's the 2008 All-Star Game, and it's yours. Next on Fox. The 2008 All-Star Game on Fox, sponsored by MasterCard. By DirecTV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. By MLB Banking, only at Bank of America. And by Taco Bell, escape the everyday with Taco Bell's new Frutista Freeze. Well, do you know by now that we're at Yankee Stadium for the 79th All-Star Game here in the Bronx? Final year for this jewel. In its 85th season. Now, here we go with the National League starting lineup. It's brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Hanley Ramirez leads it off. Chase Utley batting second. The Philadelphia Philly, Lance Berkman hits third. Then Albert Pujols, the DH. Chipper Jones is batting in the number five spot. Matt Holliday in right. Ryan Braun in left. Kosuke Pukadome is batting in the eighth position in center. And the other Cub, both are rookies. Giovanni Soto is doing the catching and batting ninth. And we ask you right now to reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. And inside Yankee Stadium, fans are invited to join the Aquafina Make Your Body Happy sweepstakes during tonight's All-Star Game on Fox to win a trip to St. Louis for next year's All-Star Game. Go to foxsports.com slash Aquafina to get your game code and watch tonight's broadcast for the announcement of the winning code. Tim, I want you to talk about a left-handed pitcher named Cliff Lee, and I'm just going to sit over here and be quiet. For well, a well, six years ago, well, you've had a tough hour this first hour. Six years ago, uh, the general manager of the Cleveland Indians, Mark Shapiro, Traded Brandon Bartolo Colon and Tim Drew 
two right handed pitchers to the Montreal Expo for Brandon Phillips Brady Sizemore Lee Stevens and Cliff Lee and have all four ever paid dividends but perhaps none more than Cliff Lee this year even though the Indians are not doing well in the standings Omar Minaya was actually the general manager on the other end of that deal right. And for Cliff Lee, a guy who allowed no runs in a career high 27 straight innings during the majority of the month of April, here he is starting the All Star game, and Hanley Ramirez went up there ready to rip. Hanley Ramirez, if you don't know, and here is that swing, is one of the game's brightest and best young stars. The 2006 Rookie of the Year, and what does it say about Ramirez? And Tim about the fans of the game of baseball who says they shouldn't have a vote. Hanley Ramirez gets the start. Beat out players like Jose Reyes, Jimmy Rollins, players from bigger markets. But Ramirez is the best the league has to offer. That's ball one. One of the terrific players in the game. And we talked about the trade of Cliff Lee. Well, it was a trade of Hanley Ramirez from the Boston Red Sox in the Josh Beckett trade several years ago. A ball and two strikes from Cliff Lee and a good start for the Cleveland left hander as he strikes out Ramirez. Looked like a cut fastball in on the hands. You can see Joe Maurer setting up inside and Lee strikes out Ramirez to start the game. Talked about that streak of scoreless innings for Cliff Lee. He had an ERA of 0.67 his first seven starts of the year. He was 18 and 5 in 2005. Really had three good years, and then last year was injured, found himself back in the minor leagues, and now he's an all star. Strike one to Chase Utley. You might be hard pressed to believe, if you don't see enough of Chase Utley, that his swing would produce as much power as it does. Very compact. But boy he can pop the baseball. He has the most compact swing and all the all stars will tell you that on either roster from here to here that compact swing not a big man but very very strong third all star game for Chase Utley and having an MVP type oh. year and if he should win it with a big second half it would be three in a row for the Phillies. Ryan Howard in 06 Jimmy Rollins last year and who knows Chase Utley the Yankees did that three years in a row back in the 60s the early 60s with Maris Mantle and Elston Howard. The Phillies check into the break a half game up on the red hot New York Mets on the inside corner and back to back strikeouts to start the night from Cliff Lee. Left starting Utley out of way and then comes inside to lock him up. Well, the New York Mets have won nine in a row. That is the longest winning streak that they have had in their history going into the All Star break. The previous longest streak was seven in a row back in 1991. Meanwhile, Florida is only a game and a half out. All right. So a tight race in the NL East. Here's Lance Berkman. Up there ready to hack and he comes up empty. Strike one. Here is a guy who is one of the best switch hitters statistically in the history of the game. He is much more powerful batting left handed. But he has put up some serious numbers a little looper into right center field and to his left making the catch Josh Hamilton and a perfect first inning for Cliff Lee. Down goes the National League one two three out to work at sheets. Here comes the AL. MLB at Home is presented by Flonase Allergy Relief. Get 24 hour all in one allergy relief with Flonase. The 2008 All Star Game on Fox, sponsored by the Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, starring Brendan Fraser and Jet Lee, by Aquafina, the official water of Major League Baseball, and by Chevy, an American Revolution. First pitch to Ichiro Suzuki is over but low from the hard throwing right hander Ben Sheets a 10 game winner during the first half and the sixth best ERA in the National League at 
Ichiro got under it. Skies one into right, and that's easy for Holiday. No base runners yet. Here's tonight's American League lineup brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bond. Ichiro is out. Derek Jeter is coming up. Then it's Josh Hamilton, Alex Rodriguez, Manny Ramirez. Milton Bradley is the DH. Kevin Euclid at first. Joe Maurer does the catching, and Dustin Pedroia is batting ninth, the second baseman. A nice ovation for Derek Jeter, who Tim has done nothing but win since he stepped foot in the big leagues. Last time the New York Yankees won a World Series was against the Mets in 2000, and that year Derek Jeter was the MVP of the All-Star Game and the World Series. Breaking ball from Sheets is a beauty. Ben Sheets is part of the one two punch at the top of the rotation for the Milwaukee Brewers. They made the deal. They got CC Sabathia. Both are free agents to be. Jeter lays off. One ball, one strike. We talked about the compact swing of Chase Utley. What about the compact curveball of Ben Sheets with Josh Hamilton on deck? That's in at the knees, and that's strike two. Only Luke Gehrig and Babe Ruth have more hits in a Yankee uniform than Derek Jeter. As the National League players hang over that railing in front of their dugout and watch Jeter check his swing and just get a piece. Here are the Yankees all time hits leaders. Luke Gehrig leads the way. The Babe is next at over twenty five hundred. And then it's Derek Jeter at two thousand four hundred fifty six. And Babe Ruth and Luke Gehrig hit a lot of balls to right field, and that's where Derek Jeter hits the ball, particularly with two strikes. And he goes to right on a line, tough hop. Utley can't play it, and Jeter is on with a one-out hit. And so one on, one out for a guy who probably needed help to brush his teeth this morning, Josh Hamilton. A record 28 home runs in the first round of the State Farm Home Run Derby last night. Does that mean if you hit a lot of home runs you can't brush your teeth? <laughs> I'm just saying at some point Holy back shit. it down and have something left for the third round. But this place went nuts. Oh, telling you. Chanting his name and here's a guy who has been through a lot. A lot of it self inflicted pain with the kind of life he was leading. Jeter takes off, throw by Soto, way late. Huge jump for Derek Jeter. Right pitch on which to run, the breaking ball down, and Jeter has a stolen base. Just no chance for Soto with that kind of jump against. Ben Sheets and now Hamilton and A Rod have a chance to put the AL on top. Another good breaking ball from Sheets. And down goes Josh Hamilton, out number two. So a strikeout follows the stolen base, and now Alex Rodriguez will walk to the plate. Josh Hamilton's turn will come back around at some point as we go through this game. And We'll talk more about his personal story and how he has climbed out of a hole to become one of the most celebrated young players involved in this game. Meanwhile there's Alex Rodriguez who has been elected as a starter for the 11th time and what is shaping up is a sure Hall of Fame career. Good fastball from Sheets at 96 it's one and one. Alex Rodriguez moved past Mickey Mantle on Saturday with career home run number 537. He's number 13 on the all time list. Two and one. Fifth season in a Yankee uniform. After opting out of his deal at the end of last year, he re upped with New York. The 2 1. Popped up. Foul, and Soto gives it a look. Inning over. And Soto takes a spill after slipping on a rosin bag or something near the on deck circle. 
Ramirez got out of his way and that weighted bat did not but he appears to be OK Cup fans we've played one in the Bronx no score. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase Sensivist. Nothing stronger. Nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensivist. 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief. First pitch on the way to the D.H. Albert Pujols. As Joe Saunders, a left-hander, gets ready for the American League. So Lee, it appears, is two and out, which was the plan by Terry Francona coming in. Pujols is for the seventh time an All-Star, eight seasons in the big leagues. Doing it again with the bat. And you can make a strong case and say Alex Rodriguez is the best player. I would make a strong case to say Albert Pujols is the best hitter in this game. You wouldn't get much of an argument out of the players who play the game. He has the ability of hitting the best pitchers best pitches no matter the situation and those two are one two in the game today. He's got a great batting eye which that statistic supports. Rarely does he look foolish going after a pitcher's pitch. And a chop to the left side and from Pujols to A-Rod one out and for more on Cliff Lee and his unusual offseason training regimen. Let's go down to our buddy Ken Rosenthal. Ken. Joe Cliff Lee was totally committed to strengthening his core maintaining his workout routine this offseason even when he was pursuing his passion for hunting. When he was deer hunting he would take a pull up bar with him put it between two trees and do pull ups. When he was duck hunting sitting in his duck blind. He'd even do some modified crunches to pass the time. That's how much he wanted to get back to what he was before. First hit of the night for the National League belongs to Chipper Jones. And why not? Chipper Jones checked in with the game's best average of 376. The 1999 National League most valuable player was chasing 400 earlier in the season. That obviously tapered off. But he doesn't seem to be slowing down at all at the age of 36. Now the one thing that, that hitters try to do in the All Star game is try to swing early in the count. If you let allow these guys to get ahead of you they can bury you as Lee did the first four hitters. Matt Holiday goes after the first pitch and chops it to Euclid the Gold Glove Award winner taps him for out number two and it will leave it up to Ryan Braun with Chipper Jones at second two out. The common theme in All Star games low scoring poor batting averages by both sides and keep this in mind since 1933 the American League over as Joe said 85 years or 75 years has scored one more run than the National League one more run in 75 years that's how tight it's been and really that's the trend that we've seen even more of as the era of specialty pitchers has developed to the point where in the seventh eighth and ninth you could see the game's best closers come out for two outs at the plate is Ryan Braun and Ryan took third in the home run derby here last night and this is a guy who just burst onto the big league scene the 2007 rookie of the year and only the second player Rudy York being the other one in 1937 to hit 30 plus home runs in less than 115 games. Great hands quick bat. And in the hole here 0 and 2. Kosuke Fukudome is on deck. But it's up to Ryan Braun to keep this top of the second alive otherwise Cliff Lee will go do sit ups and pull ups knowing that he has pitched two scoreless innings in the All Star game. And he'll do just that. Wonder if Ken will join him. Cliff Lee did his work to shut out innings, allowing only one hit, striking out two. And we go to the bottom of the second here at Yankee Stadium. No score. The 2008 All Star Game on Fox, sponsored by Budweiser, reached for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Oh. 
A check swing by Manny Ramirez, and we are underway in the bottom of the second. It's Manny Ramirez, Milton Bradley, the DH, and then Kevin Euclid, the first baseman teammate of Manny Ramirez with the Boston Red Sox. Carlos Zambrano, the hard throwing right hander, getting loose for the NL. And you can just see the movement on that fastball from Ben Sheets. That is nasty down in toward the right handed hitter, but it's 2 0. And now Ramirez pops it down the right field line, slicing toward the seats, and it's foul and out of play. Little did Ben Sheets know that when he faced Colorado on Wednesday and struck out 11 in six innings, even though he got the loss, he caught enough of the eye of Clint Hurdle, who's the NL manager, to get the start here tonight. And I would say that Clint has pick the right guy Ben Sheets was not in awe certainly reverential of being here at Yankee Stadium and getting this assignment but he pitched a good first inning throwing hard and he has Ramirez late on the fastball two and two facing the best two strike hitter in the game a man who became the 24th member of the 500 home run club and from Washington Heights not far away his career at Yankee Stadium he has dominated Yankee pitching whether it's with the Indians or with the Red Sox and he wants time so sheets will deal with the five six and seven hitters and now we're going to start dipping into the bullpens and we have sort of an idea of what each manager is thinking about their bullpen as we go along and we'll try to share that with you a member of the bullpen in the American League is Justin Dukeshire. During the pregame festivities, I, not Bob Shepard, who should have been doing it, but is not feeling well and was not here, so I step in and I say Dukeshire. I practiced it, I did it in front of the mirror, the time came, the light went on, and I blew it. Justin, I'm sorry. Manny Ramirez goes after a breaking ball, a filthy pitch. From Ben Sheets, and that's strikeout number two. His breaking balls tonight have been superb. Tightly wrapped, quick, no chance for Ramirez. And with one out, nobody on, Milton Bradley will be the hitter, and Manny Ramirez will think about the at bat. It was a surprise to him that Milton Bradley was even going to be ready at the beginning of the season, let alone put together this kind of a first half. He's the DH in place of David Ortiz. Big Poppy was voted in. He's bothered by that tendon sheath in his left wrist, and he is looking at a July 25th return, so he's not in action in the game. Milton Bradley is, and the count's two and one. Milton's uh, manager last year was Bud Black of the San Diego Padres, and coming out to argue a play at first base, Bud Black ended up. Uh, trying to prevent Milton from arguing with the first base umpire messed up his knee as a result and Bud Black but Black is a member of the National League coaching staff tonight. there's a strike the count is full yeah he tore his right ACL which can be a 12 month process of trying to get back and he came back in half the time impressive and that's low and that's a one out walk and the first walk handed out tonight one on one out for Kevin Euclid. There are the numbers for Euclid, who has a tremendous batting eye is very good at managing the strike zone and is so good at fouling off nasty pitches he can extend at bats get his pitch and he doesn't miss it ball one. A little surprising that Kevin Euclid got a very nice round of applause, more than any other Red Sox player this evening. Of course, it's hard to tell when they give you one of those you, you don't know what they're doing. I think he was rivaled only by J.D. Drew <laughs> by the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Papelbon, no. That was easy to hear. Ramirez, no. 
Euclid's one of seven Boston Red Sox players involved in this game. That is fouled out of play. Here's that introduction. Before the game, shaking hands with his counterpart, Lance Berkman, in the Hall of Fame first baseman. Here's a 2 1 pitch. 2 and 2. 95 mile an hour fastball from Ben Sheets. Sheets gets a $50,000 bonus. Since he was named the starter for this All Star game, he is going to turn 30 in three days. There goes the runner, Bradley. Throw down is too late. So knee and all Bradley took off and for Milton he only has four steals during the regular season this ball in on the knees and in getting out of the way of the ball Euclid actually stepping in front of Giovanni Soto and Milton Bradley has the first AL stolen base of the night. I think Bradley caught everybody by surprise. I make that the second stolen base Derek Jeter had one in the first. Utley was late getting over to the bag and Soto didn't have much of a chance then threw low so now a 3 2 to Euclid is grounded to third foul as we play here in the second inning and there is action for the National League with Zambrano getting loose we look at that shot right down the third baseline but clearly foul there is Zambrano. Runner at second, one out, 3 2 pitch. Another strikeout for Ben Sheets. And that's his third of the night. It'll be up to Joe Mauer. Talked about the eye that Kevin Euclid possesses at home plate. This is a bad breaking ball up. The one thing managers do not want to do in all star competition is bring in starting pitchers in the middle of an inning. That's the one thing Clint Hurdle. Emphasizing to us that starters start innings, they don't come in in the middle of it. So now it is up to Joe Maurer. And Maurer takes ball one. AL batting champ was Joe Maurer in 2006, and when he won that title, he became the first American League catcher ever to win a batting title. And that's ball two. I know that impresses you, Tim, a guy who caught for so long to be able to maintain your health, your legs, everything it takes to hit. Because of the pounding uh, that your left hand takes, a lot of your third and fourth at bats are giveaway at bats, lazy fly balls the other way. Keep the hands healthy. That's it's very, very difficult to do. Count two balls and a strike, and we give you a Burger King hot zone for Joe Maurer. It was a career 315 hitter. It's actually something that Clint Hurdle, the National League manager, called for and was looking at prior to the game matchups, the hot zones for certain hitters. The 2 1. Bauer takes high on deck is Pedroia. Ramirez let off. He struck out. Bradley walked, stole second. Euclid struck out. Glenn Allen Hill on the right. Coach for Clint Hurdle. Kerry Wood, that's on the inside corner, and the count's full. Thirty eighth pitch of the night coming here from Ben Sheets. Third consecutive full count, and he walks Joe Maurer. So with two on, two out, we'll tell you that Boys and Girls Clubs of America is the official charity of Major League Baseball. Youngsters from the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Clubs helped lead today's All-Star Game Red Carpet Parade up Sixth Avenue in Manhattan. And hand in hand with Major League Baseball, they have done a great job in creating positive environment for kids and now with two on and two out here's Pedroia two strikeouts two walks in the inning and Dustin Pedroia takes a strike 
There is no hotter hitter in the game than Dustin Pedroia. Since the middle of June, he is number one in baseball in batting average at over 440. Hits and runs. One ball, one strike. And even though he is a hot hitter and bats in the number two spot for Terry Francona, as you look at where he ranks in the big league since the middle of June, Francona wanted to make sure that Jeter hit in the number two spot here in his home park. So Pedroia is hitting ninth. He gets under one to center. Back to get it is Fukudome, and that'll do it for the first two here at Yankee Stadium. No score. Back after a word from your local Fox station. MLB Priceless Moments, presented by MasterCard. Gives the ball to the kid. <laughs> How awesome is that? Jimenez in the air. One happy fan. That's why we love this great game and the great players in it. The moment. That's amazing. That is amazing. There big hug. A big Josh Bell fan. We wish you a long and happy life together. Like Trout, as usual, signing autographs with some young fans and the reaction priceless. One of the many Yankee Stadium moments we plan to bring you tonight. This one is fitting. Game 5, 1956 World Series. And the Don Larson perfect game. And that catcher leaping into the arms of Don Larson and wearing his number eight is right here in the booth between Tim and Joe. And that person is Yogi Berra. How are you, sir? All right, Jay. How are you doing? I'm doing good. All right, good. Tim, you're doing all right? You're doing just <laughs> ter terrific. You know, for $250 more as a signing bonus, you could have been with the Cardinals. Cardinals. They wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> Growing up on the hill in St. Louis, I so wish that I would have had a chance to see you to see you play. And Tim, I know uh, this was a man who had power, who could run, who was called one of the toughest outs in the last three innings of a ball game. Ted Williams called you that the toughest Tim, out. Well, well, sometimes that's a good time to hit you know, men on base. Yeah, well, nobody could pitch around you though because you were such a, a great well, high ball hitter. Well, I kid Jeter all the time. You know, he swings at that high ball. I said, what do you swing at it for? He says, you swing at it. I hit it. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> We've had such a good time. I have getting to know you hanging around now at Yankee Stadium. And there's no doubt, Yogi, that this game always keeps you young. And uh, you love being around today's players. Don't I you? do. I enjoy it. I come out here. I'll come out Friday. We open up uh, Friday with, uh, I think, uh, LA. I always come out. I come out to see the players. I really do. I enjoy it. You see uh, Jeter, Rodriguez, Ramirez, and, I, uh, and the other kid that, uh, so that I call him Muscles. Uh, Giambi? G no, not Giambi. Giambi, no, he's big. He's muscles. <laughs> No, he's a relief pitcher. Uh, Rivera? Uh, Rivera. That's Mariana uh, Rivera. Mo. Mo. Get him. How would you have liked to have caught Mariana Rivera? In your he's nice to catch. <laughs> you nice only to have catch. to put down one sign. He only well, throws just, one pitch. That's just like Larson when he pitched a no hitter. Anything you put down, he got over that day. He was only three balls on the, in the first inning to Pee Reese. That was it. New pitcher is Joe Saunders, guys, and just to set up with Kosuke Fukudome at the plate, he's in the hole one and two. Go ahead, Tim. He, he, uh, he got everything over, but that last pitch yeah, last of pitch, the perfect game was that last no, pitch. That's right on the corner. Uh, right on the corner. Right on the corner. <laughs> wasn't high at all. No, wasn't high. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. As you saw the Japanese spelling of Kosuke Fukudome's first name. Let's see that again. We, do we have the ability to put that back up? There it is. Ah, well, the guys in the truck misspelled it. <laughs> two two pitch chopped to the right side coming to get it is Euclid and that's one out. You know we sit up here Yogi and, and we're obviously honored to be here and we celebrate the great tradition that you have here at Yankee Stadium. You got the biggest ovation of the night. What does this night mean to you Yogi and what does this it's year great. mean the last year in the stadium. Oh it's great. The fans are real great here dude. They are. They're really great. Uh, it's like he said, you know, I wanted to play for St. Louis. It was my hometown. But they didn't want me. So uh, John Schultz, the old coach, who used to be the bullpen coach here, was the one that came over and saw me, uh, signed me up. And I signed for, I didn't want, I wanted $500. And they gave me the $500. 
ninety dollars a month. So I played. That was a lot of money. <laughs> that was Giovanni Soto that fly out. So two quick outs in this game. Also a nice moment before tonight's game with George Steinbrenner coming back oh, and delivering great. the baseball. Great, great, great. I know that meant a lot to you. Yeah, I got his that. ball. I got to get him the autograph right now. You're sitting over in his box, yeah, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, we just got down. up here. You did? Yeah, we had to take pictures with the commissioner. Yeah. And everything. How about Sarah Jessica Parker? She was here. You're a big she fan wasn't of her. Bad. Huh? Not, she bad. Wasn't bad. not bad. There you go, Yogi Berra. Sarah Jessica Parker. Eh, not bad. She's all right. All right. She'll make Matthew Broderick happy. That's down and away. Two balls, no strikes. And Cheryl Crow, they just uh, presented something on the field uh, involved with breast cancer, baseball giving back. And, and you've been a guy who. Has stayed with this game and uh, been very charitable over the years. It's nice what this game, Yogi, has been able to do for you yeah. and put you in a position well, to do I, so I, much good. I like the game. I like it. I like to play. I, I enjoyed it. I always said, "Look, could you make that kind of money? Play for two and a half hours." <laughs> I, now I today, it. how about this? Uh -oh. Here's Ramirez with a base hit into right field, and Hanley Ramirez, one of the game's best young players, is on. Yeah. And Chase Utley is coming up. Now tell, I mean, you're known for the sayings. You know, the stuff that just falls out yeah, of your mouth. Right. I don't know I say them. I really don't. You don't? I, I know, Jack. I really don't. It just happens to come out. My sons even tell me when I go to the museum, said, Dad, you said another one. I didn't even know what I said. That that he museum, by the way, in Montclair, New Jersey, and one of the great he museums in this area. Yeah. Well, we enjoy. It. We take care of a lot of kids, and, uh, and we have a lot of fun there and everything. And uh, I enjoy it. I have you ever kids. not had any fun? No, no. Other than this see. moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm having fun now. Right. I wouldn't be talking to you. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I do. I enjoy it, you know, the baseball, it's in my blood. You know, I, that's all I ever did. If I had to go to work, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but I, I, I love the game, I really do. Well, we got some good guys on the Yankees, you know, you go in and talk to them. They have fun with them. They You're a treasure, my friend, yeah, thank you. Thanks thank for you. coming up. Right. Here it is again, the moment, Yogi Berra leaping right. into the arms right. Right. of Don Larson. 1956. An honor to have him in the booth. Introduced tonight before the game. Still no score. Here is Carlos Zambrano, second pitcher of the night for the National League. There is still no score. NL has two hits. The AL has one, but they were handed two walks by Ben Sheets. Sheets was very good. Two innings. No runs. One hit. Two walks and three strikeouts. And so now Zambrano, who has been one of the biggest winners in baseball over the last handful of years. Here's a line drive into right base hit off the bat of Ichiro. Eighth year for Ichiro, eighth All Star game. Last year, the first inside the park home run ever hit in all-star competition. He did that at AT&T Park in San Francisco. And look at that. Those stats, he has accomplished all of that every year he has been with the Seattle Mariners. Rookie of the year, MVP. And those who watch him during batting practice on a regular basis will tell you, if he wanted to, he could be a home run hitter in right. the big leagues. Right. That's just not his game. Over 1,700 hits. He turns 35 this fall. So he could complete next year and have 2,000 hits in, uh, in nine years. So so guy, you, you have to really think about consideration for the Hall of Fame. Oh, there's no doubt. Yeah. Double play ball hit to Ramirez off the bat of Jeter. 6-4-3. Jeter, who singled his first time, bounces into a tailor-made double play. Ramirez to Utley and on to Berkman. And so now Zambrano has the bases empty behind him. Two out. Josh Hamilton coming up. Tim, we talked about Josh Hamilton, and the story has been talked about a lot recently. Three years ago, he was a drug addict. Smoking crack, taking pills, drinking booze, has all the tattoos on his arms. 26 of them. He regrets every one of them. 
And by his own admission, he was doing, quote, everything he could to kill himself. He was losing weight because of the drug addiction. Showed up at his grandmother's door looking for food, basically, and shelter. She took him in. She gave him a look when he showed up at her door. And he promised her he would never do it again. We'll move into the fourth. A look at the Brooklyn Bridge on a beautiful night. No score. The 2008 All-Star Game on Fox is sponsored by Chevy and American Revolution. Well, this All-Star Game flies through three innings, and this is the first time an All-Star Game has been scoreless through three since 1995. There's a look at the new building, the newest version of Yankee Stadium right across the street. And in the middle of the current one, Roy Halladay, who is the ace of the Blue Jays staff, takes over for Saunders and fires a 95 mile an hour strike. He's got a great hook, good fastball. In this season, seven complete games for Toronto, and that's more than any other team has put up one of those complete games last Friday a two hit shutout against the Yankees one of two games won by the Toronto Blue Jays at Rogers Dome in Toronto. I saw a moment during batting practice Tim with Roy Halladay and Mariano Rivera out in the outfield as Berkman comes up empty and he is the fourth strikeout victim of the night for the American League pitchers and there is Roy Halliday who knows who's talking to who and sharing what it looks more like that's a cutter lesson right yes yeah, I was going to say it looks more like Mariano Rivera is giving the lesson that's exactly right that's a cutter lesson how do you make the ball move into left handers and away from right handers like you do and if I'm a fan of the Tampa Bay Rays or the Toronto Blue Jays, I say, guys, stay there as long as you want. Scott Casimir was there listening in, as was Roy Halladay. A foul ball for strike one as Pujols waits for that breaking ball that has him bailing, and that's strike two. There's Casimir. That is a smart move by a young pitcher and one of the game's best pitchers and Scott Casimir. Nothing in two is the count on Albert Pujols who bounced out to third his first time up. Sticking the bat out and poking it toward the corner this ball is fair. Pujols will dig for second throw by Ichiro on the mark out. Two gone. Not only up over 1700 hits. He's the best right fielder that I've seen since Clemente. He's not better than Roberto was. But you talk about a guy who does everything right not only at the plate. But off the wall to get Pujols. Close play at second base. Foot may have been in there, but a terrific throw by Ichiro. And now Chipper Jones chops one over the head of Halliday. And we are going into the bottom of the fourth inning. We started this game six and a half minutes ago. Wow. Still no score. Alex Rodriguez first up against Carlos Zambrano who is leading the Chicago Cubs staff a staff that just added Rich Harden and the Chicago Cubs are on top tied with baseball's best record at 57 and 38 four and a half games in front of St. Louis Alex Rodriguez meanwhile part of the Yankee team that is in third place in the AL East. New York six out in the division five and a half out behind Tampa Bay in the wild card chase. Rodriguez on 0 and 2 takes ball one. There is Lou Pinella manager former manager for the Yankees and current manager of the Chicago Cubs and he has that team rolling. 
One two pitch another strikeout this one belongs to Zambrano that's his first of the night. Well, these pitchers just blowing these hitters away. Not a lot of balls hit hard thus far. Clint Hurdle during our meeting tonight before the game said that he's going to allow Lou Pinello to argue for him if uh, if something breaks out. Why not? Fans of would course. love it. <laughs> they would. Here's Manny Ramirez who struck out his first time. Four strikeouts by National League hurlers. Three for Sheets. And Whoa! What is that? That was a little moment between those two. A big looping breaking ball that went over the head of Manny Ramirez. <laughs> he almost got a strike on a foul tip. He got a smile out of Manny. Did. That's just Carlos being Carlos. A tip foul in the count one and one. And there's the reaction from Zambrano's teammate, Aramis Ramirez. So one ball, one strike. And Manny takes one inside. On deck is Milton Bradley. 16th season in the big leagues for Ramirez, and this is the 12th All Star game for Manny. Very intelligent hitter, a guy who can set pitchers up. Good two strike hitter, and he has two strikes now. 96 from Zambrano as Danny Heron gets loose from the Diamondbacks and for the National League in the Burger King hot zone for Manny Ramirez. Looks to him. Very much like this. The big looping breaking ball not pictured or statistically supported. Yeah, they got to convince me of that though. Ball down and in, he can't handle. He hits 167. Uh -oh. Here's one to the right side, Utley to his left, out number two. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? Well, you don't say that that, per uh, that particular area to Manny Ramirez, he is not hitting 167. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I hear you. Forget about it. <laughs> so with two out here is Milton Bradley. Do you know who turns nine years old today? Who? Natalie Buck's little sister, Trudy. Oh. oh Happy nice. birthday, Trudes. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Who will be celebrating home field advantage, the AL or the NL after this one? And so far, the way this is gone, we'll still be playing tomorrow because nobody looks like they're going to break through anytime soon. Wow. Just blown by the bat of Milton Bradley, one ball, one strike. Yeah, thus far, and keep in mind, these are all star players, all star hitters. They haven't looked like it tonight, not against these guys. Good dip to that pitch, and Ramirez let it go high and safe as Bradley hustling down the line. That'll be an error on Hanley Ramirez. He has 16 during the regular season, and this one just got away from him. Yeah, a careless throw by Ramirez, and even to, to Milton Bradley's credit, had this ball been on the money, he could have beaten the, the throw. That's how close it would have been. But the throw was high and an error on Ramirez. I think that replay shows you what Hanley Ramirez was looking at. He looked up and saw Milton Bradley hustling oh. down the line, not taking anything for granted. It is an error officially. He hurried his throw, he got under it, it took off, and the inning continues for Euclid. Kevin struck out his first time. And First, picked off as Milton Bradley. Unbelievable. He had thoughts of his second steal of the night, and he got caught flat footed. Let's go to the fifth. Still no score. MLB at Home is presented by Flonase Allergy Relief. Get 24 hour all in one allergy relief with Flonase. Tonight's game on Fox, sponsored by Gillette Fusion Power Phenom. Fusion Power, the world's most comfortable shave. By Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. And by Pineapple Express, starring Seth Rogen and James Franco in theaters August 8th. Tonight, up above, aerial coverage brought to you by the DirecTV HD Starship. Your ticket to the most sports in HD. 
some changes now as Josh Hamilton moves from center to left. Brady Sizemore, one of the game's most exciting players, is in the game at center representing the Indians. And the second Los Angeles Angel of Anaheim, Urban Santana, second pitcher of this game. Saunders went one scoreless with one hit. And now with Matt Holiday digging in. Braun to follow, then Kosuke Fukudome. Santana takes over, and you're not going to get any dip in pitching stuff with Urban Santana. Pitching for the best record in baseball, the team with the best record, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, six games ahead of the Oakland Athletics at the break. And it is worth saying what you have said before with me on a Saturday game of the week. As Santana delivers that pitch the bottom fell out of it strike two and that is while we look at Terry Francona and we've applauded the job he's done over the years Mike Sosia deserves so much credit for the consistent winning and the atmosphere he has created around that Angels team I mean who's better than Mike Sosia uh, you get no argument from me I, out of that comment you talk about a thoroughly professional outfit the Angels. They run the bases well. They catch the ball. They pitch well. They are managed superbly, as Joe said. And all they do is win year after year. That one dips down and away in the count. Two balls, two strikes. They are on our Fox Saturday baseball game of the week against the Red Sox this week coming up Padres and Cardinals as well and the Phillies and Marlins good series that's a foul tip and Holiday who rounded out his first time stays alive again on deck is Braun and Fukudome getting down to the second at bats now for guys toward the bottom of the lineup and we could start seeing some bench players come in that's well hit to right off the bat of Holiday and the National League strikes first home run the opposite way and Holiday who has 14 during the regular season goes deep to put the NL on top Boy, that ball just jumped off his back he's a big guy saw his Colorado Rockies lose three in a row to the New York Mets over the weekend and he crosses New York City to the Bronx and puts the National League on the board first run of the ball game fastball away hammered to right field so Santana gives up the home run and with nobody on or out a breaking ball is in for a strike to Ryan Braun. So the National League gets to draw first blood in this 79th All-Star game. Fastball is over but low one ball one strike in the first All-Star game home run for Matt Holliday. Foul back. Holliday gets the starting spot because of the broken hand suffered by Alfonso Soriano the voting holiday the players voting came in right behind Ryan Braun so he was tapped by his own manager Clint Hurdle who's managing the National League to start tonight and it pays off up the middle to his right Pedroia gets it throws it one out <laughs> I need to go online now to enter the Aquafina Make Your Body Happy Sweepstakes for a chance to win a trip to next year's All-Star Game in St. Louis. Get your game code at foxsports.com slash Aquafina. Stay tuned because we'll be announcing the winning game code later in tonight's broadcast. Aquafina, make your body happy. A-Rod is taken out of the lineup by Terry Francona, something he hinted to us he might do as Joe Creedy takes over at third base, allow the Yankee Stadium crowd the opportunity to cheer Alex Rodriguez on his way off. And Creedy will bat in the number four spot.
Fukudome takes strike two. It's 0 2. I think it was a, a very nice gesture on the part of Terry Francona. I think it surprised the crowd. And A Rod was off the field before the crowd had a chance to react to it. Light stanchions above this stadium. Lights were added in 1946 to this structure originally put together and opened in 1923. It's been renovated plenty of times and was shut down for a couple of seasons when the Yankees played at Shea. Good tight breaking ball down and in and Fukudome is gone. That's out number two. First strikeout for Santana. Just think 1923. The stadium built for two and a half million dollars. Now on both all star rosters there are 41 players who make more than what it costs to build Yankee Stadium. There it is two point five million dollars and it took them something like two hundred eighty four days to build. It. Yeah. And there was no jersey of David Ortiz or any Red Sox <laughs> under this original Yankee Stadium. <laughs> oh and one is the count now oh and two on Giovanni Soto. First rookie nationally catcher to start in an all star game and he set up at 0 and 2 he fly to center his first time up and goodbye Soto the first run of the night is on the board off the bat of Matt Holliday against Irvin Santana it was up and away it flew halfway through it one zip and out. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flonase Sensivist. Nothing stronger. Nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensivist. 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief. Tribute to this stadium, the Hall of Famers, the current All Stars prior to tonight's game as Nate McLeod takes over in center from the Pirates. Russell Martin is now behind the plate, and Dan Heron is on the mound. Heron was the starter in last year's All Star game while pitching for the A's. He went two innings, allowed a run on two hits, and here he is now representing the Diamondbacks. Euclid fouls it away strike two. It's hard to believe Tim that a guy this talented and Danny Heron has been traded two times and he's only 27 years old. Traded from the Cardinals to Oakland primarily to get Mark Mulder. You could understand that. And then traded to the Diamondbacks as he gets Euclid just to flip at it. He flies to right. It is just past 10 o'clock in the East, and tonight's Formax game summary is don't go get something from the refrigerator. <laughs> first All Star game home run for Matt Holliday, and the score game was for the first four innings. For the first time since 1990, as the pitching is just totally dominated. Here's Joe Mauer. That's ball one. Talked about uh, in Heron's case, understanding the Cardinal deal because of Mark Mulder going to the Cardinals. You can understand it from the Oakland Athletics standpoint, with uh, Danny going to Arizona. Up the middle, Heron knocked it down, and that turned what might have been an out into a sure hit. And. Heron knows it tried to make the play and couldn't come up with it cleanly so Bauer is on ball off the end of the glove and I agree with you I think uh, Ramirez makes that play had Heron not made contact so one on one out and Dustin Pedroia will be the hitter as we get a pinch runner at first for Joe Bauer that's Ian Kinsler. So you've got a new catcher in Russell Martin, obviously the new pitcher, and the American League has shown that they will run here tonight. Kinsler has 23 steals. He's been caught only once, and that total of 23 is good for fifth in the American League. So we'll keep an eye on him. So will Russell Martin, who smothers that pitch for ball one. 
So Pedroia with his second at bat he got under one and fly to center his first time up. A little start and stop at first by Kinsler and the count goes to two and zero on Pedroia. It is different for these players as well playing this all star game here at Yankee Stadium. And how excited all of these guys are as this looks like a throw over it is and Kinsler gets back without a tag that used to be the knockdown pitch a thumb up. But uh, it's Thank interesting you. that they have a throw over sign. It's very unusual for a guy who is not catching a guy like Danny Heron. But they have a throw over sign and that was the as Joe said the thumb up. There goes Kinsler got a good jump Martin's throw is high and safe is Ian Kinsler. There's the tying run with only one out here in the fifth. Good jump and Russell Martin really has no chance. That's the third stolen base of this game for the American League but they've yet to play to runner. Tell you what, Martin did about all he could. That was a good throw. So did Utley. Quick tag, good throw, too good a jump. Now Pedroia can tie it with a hit. 3 0 pitch is up and in, a walk. And that's the third walk handed to the AL tonight. Two on, one out. Ichiro coming up. We mentioned this earlier when Yogi was here. Tonight, baseball commissioner Bud Selig, Cheryl Crow, and Sarah Jessica Parker spoke. To the Yankee Stadium crowd on behalf of Stand Up to Cancer. It's a new initiative that Major League Baseball is playing a major part, donating over $10 million and another 15 to 20 million of assets and resources. Accelerating groundbreaking research, all in collaboration with TV networks, the entertainment industry, and prominent leaders in cancer research and patient advocacy. As Ichiro takes a strike from Dan Heron. Suzuki is one for two. He is singled and fly to right. Good speed on Kinsler and Pedroia for the AL. One ball, one strike. So Heron in a jam as the American League puts two on. They had two on back in the second against Ben Sheets. But he got out of trouble. Sheets went two, Zambrano two, and now Heron. On the inside corner, strike two, good pitch. Ichiro didn't think so. Martin has to cross the plate. He's setting up outside, and the pitch was inside. It's a fallacy to think that uh, pitchers get it exactly where they want it all the time. Glenn Hurdle, Jamie Cork, and a strikeout of Ichiro. First for Heron, second out of the inning. And it'll be up to Derek Jeter. Most likely the last at bat of the night for Derek Jeter. I wonder if Terry Francona will use the same strategy with Jeter that he used with A Rod. Send him out there and then send someone in for him defensively. Breaking ball is low. Jeter is singled, stolen a base, and bounced into a double play. Is 0 for 5 tonight with runners in scoring position on the corner. One ball, one strike. Heron's first inning of work. Having to deal with Derek Jeter. A chance to tie it with a hit. Filthy pitch swung on and missed in that strike two. That looked like a splitter that went down to Jeter. See that dead spin and Jeter over the top. <laughs> 
fastball just missed two and two. The National League is not one since 1996. 40 36 and two all time in all star games. The AL over the last 20 16 three and one. A 2 2 pitch to Jeter. Ryan Ludwig of the Cardinals and Glenn Allen Hill, a coach for Glenn Hurdle, talk it over. Ludwig is a great story. Coming out of nowhere for St. Louis, he's hit 20 home runs and he is in awe being a part of tonight's festivities. Watching a 2 2. Jeter takes ball three and the runners will go. Go. Cheater bounces it back to Heron. This time it gloves it cleanly. The inning is over. The AL strands a couple. We go to the sixth inning. Still one to nothing. National League. The 2008 All Star Game on Fox, sponsored by Aquafina, the official water of Major League Baseball. Tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. A number of changes for the American League. Porno is at first base, representing the Minnesota Twins. Kinsler, who pinch ran now, is at second base. Pedroia is out. But Pedroia's teammate, J.D. Drew, takes over in right field. And another teammate, Jason Ferritek, behind the plate. And here is Dukesher who takes over and spins a breaking ball upstairs for ball one to Hanley Ramirez. Look at that earned run average 1.82 as a starter this year. Yeah he's been in an all star game as a setup reliever and now here he is as a starter and there isn't a better ERA to be found anywhere. I should say. They start to lurk down in that bullpen and something that we talked about at the beginning of the night Tim that the National League did get their run to this point against a starter it happened to be against Irvin Santana you've got Dukesher in there now but after this you start getting into the ninth inning guys and a quartet of pitchers that just shut everybody down. Everybody, including Joe Nathan of the Minnesota Twins, Mariana Rivera, Joaquin Soria of Kansas City. He's found a good place to sit out there next to Mariana <laughs> you Rivera. Got it. You got it. These guys are smart. <laughs> breaking ball is hammered into left field. A spinning breaking ball that was up from Dukesher and it was pounded by Hanley Ramirez who's two for three. That's pretty easy to say that that was the worst pitch of the night by any pitcher that uh, was a spinner hanging breaking ball right up around the letters. Catchers don't catch those. And so now one on nobody out for Chase Utley. And this could be it for Chase Utley. Here's a guy who is third in the National League with 25 home runs and tied for sixth with 69 RBIs. Takes a ball. And for Utley, he is one of 12 National League All Stars who prior to tonight had never played at Yankee Stadium. There are 28 first time All Stars involved in tonight's game. As the runner goes, he'll have to come back. Ramirez was running and Utley fouled it back into the upper deck and a good play by a fan. But Utley is on that list of 12 guys who had never played in this stadium. So what a thrill it must be. Final year for this ballpark. Last game will be played here September 21st, unless the Yankees obviously make it to the postseason for the 14th consecutive year.
One ball one strike one on nobody out to check on Ramirez. Hanley has stolen 23 bases during the regular season so far. And has consecutive 50 stolen base seasons under his belt. Berkman on deck. The one one. Outside prior to the game Terry Francona told us that Dukeshire was a little bit under the weather and was a little on the bubble as to whether he was going to call on him to pitch tonight. Well he has and he's allowed a leadoff hit. And now ball three. Meanwhile Tim Tim Lincecum right left and was admitted to a hospital with quote unquote flu like symptoms prior to tonight's game so he was not even involved in the pregame ceremony yeah, and so he is not uh, obviously in uniform and we hope Tim is watching the game and hope he's fine here's a shot into right with Ramirez running Hanley will go to third on a base hit by Utley and the National League is in business here in the sixth inning first and third nobody out and the heart of the order coming up for the NL. Ball down and in. Ramirez reads it quickly and goes to third rather easily, running on the play. When talking to Terry Francona before the game, he said, If I do use Dukesher, as Ramirez turns and goes, he said, I'll have George Sherrill, the left hander, to back him up in the inning, the lefty. And we've already shown that he is up getting loose in the bullpen and it might not be too long before he's in the game as Berkman swings through strike one Lance is fly to center and struck out and that view from up top that balls inside one ball one strike but that angle I took a walk up there today prior to the game and it is a steep climb to the upper deck here at Yankee Stadium. Berkman in the air to left center field pretty well hit back is Sizemore near the track for the out tagging and scoring is Ramirez RBI for Berkman it's two nothing National League. So Berkman gets it done and doubles the lead two zip here in the sixth. Derek Jeter will be replaced. So here's Derek's moment. So a nice hand for Jeter as Michael Young takes over at short. And they just now announced the other changes. Here's Albert Pujols, one on, one out after the sack fly by Berkman. Dukeshire finds the strike zone, strike one. Fifth pitcher of the night for Terry Francona. Up the middle, off the bat of Pujols. He's on with a hit. Utley will stop at second. And that's three hits in the inning. Let's check in with Kevin Kennedy standing by with Derek Jeter. Got the captain of the Yankees right here, Derek Jeter. This whole All Star experience, the Hall of Famers out there. What does this all mean to you? It's been a fun event, man. This is this is definitely an All Star game. I didn't want to miss. I think uh, you know the Yankees have done a tremendous job. Major League Baseball deserves all the credit because uh, they're giving them the All Star game this year. And we saw Mr. Steinbrenner out there. I know how close you are to him. What did that mean to you? Oh, it's great. I mean, he's uh, New York Yankees. He's one of the first guys, or first names that come to mind, and you can't say that of very many owners in the sport. Derek, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Joe, Tim. All right, thank you guys. And one of the reasons why, in my estimation, George Steinbrenner should be in baseball's Hall of Fame. Pitches up and in. 
what he has meant to this franchise and what this franchise in turn has meant to the game the 26 world championships the empire he has built with the yes network and a man who truly loves this sport He's made a lot of controversial decisions over the course of the years became an owner in 1973 a lot of managerial firings but I think you can always say that that man the boss was doing what he could to try and help this Yankee team win ten million dollar tab to buy this franchise in 1973 since he's been here ten pennants and six World Series titles two and oh is the count two on one out Dukeshire deals to Chipper Jones strike one it has never been easy for the Yankees However, this year it's much more difficult because of the pesky, good Tampa Bay Rays, who have lost seven in a row going into the All Star break. But they are a very, very tough ball club, and the Yankees know it. 2 1 pitch swung on and missed as Chipper Jones was fooled. We've talked to Yankee players, we've talked to Joe Girardi, we've talked to Red Sox players, talked to Terry Francona. And there isn't anybody we've come across who believes that the Rays are going away. No. And it's not just an 08 thing, by the way. No. <laughs> They're going to be good for a long while as Chipper Jones strikes out on a high delivery from Dukeshire. First strikeout for Justin. You rarely see Jones going out of the strike zone on a high fastball. But for the most part, you guys did not come to the All Star game to walk. So now with two on two out the inning is up to Matt Holiday who homered his last time up. In for a strike he took this one from Irvin Santana up to right. Way out. Dukeshire could do a very good job of limiting the damage if he can get Holiday, and now that's up to Ian Kinsler. The National League gets a run. RBI sack fly by Lance Berkman. Two nothing in L into the bottom of the sixth at Yankee Stadium. The 2008 All Star Game on Fox is sponsored by Verizon Wireless. This game goes into the bottom of the sixth inning, and here we go. Adrian Gonzalez takes over at first base for Lance Berkman. All the changes are straight up. Dan Ugla is now at second base, taking over for Udley, a part of the scoring for the National League in the top of the sixth. Tejada is at short. Aramis Ramirez is over at third. Corey Hart. He was voted in the last member of the squad the 32nd by the internet voters in right and back for another inning is Dan Heron one ball one strike We started in on the story of Josh Hamilton his at bat didn't last long the last time he was up and now he gets a base hit to center to start the bottom of the sixth inning. So Josh Hamilton Tim what what is remarkable is here's a guy who was the first pick overall in 1999 by the then Tampa Bay Devil Rays. It took oh, him over Josh Beckett. You can hear he and Adrian Gonzalez talking at first base. Then he ran into the drug issues. He's tested by the way three times a week. After being reinstated. In 2006. But prior to last year, after he was picked as a Rule 5 selection by the Cubs and then traded to Cincinnati, that almost hit the head of Euclid in the dugout. Until last year, he'd only played 15 minor league games since 2002, and they were all in A ball. And then he just pops up with the Cincinnati Reds, was injured a couple of times, but put up big numbers. And the Rangers traded Edinson Volquez an all-star to get him. And he's done nothing but lead Major League Baseball 
in RBIs at the break here in 2008. The guy he was traded for, Edinson Volquez, has been as good on the mound. 12 and 3, leads the NL in ERA. And Josh Hamilton, after becoming a favorite last night, leads baseball in RBI. Yeah, you looked at that uh, graphic and the pictures of, of both Ed Edinson Volquez and Hamilton, and what you're seeing, you, you're seeing that perhaps if the second half goes like the first half, most valuable player in the American League in Hamilton and the Cy Young Award winner in Volquez could very readily happen. That is hammered foul by Joe Creedy. And for Joe Creedy, here's a guy who missed so much action last year. As you look at Papelbon and Nathan getting loose. Creedy only played in 47 games last season. He had back surgery last June. Everybody said, well, he's got a bad back. Josh Fields is the big stud coming up. We've seen the end of Joe Creedy. Well, he has hit his way and produced his way onto this team as he pops it up to second, and Dan Ugla waits for it. And Creedy becomes the first White Sox third baseman in an All Star game since Robin Ventura represented the franchise in '92. One on, one out, and Grady Sizemore will be the hitter. Imagine with the bad back playing the game the way Joe Creedy does, diving for a lot of balls at third base, and the strain on the back was in rehab for hit the lower part of his back until February, actually six weeks before the season opened. And he has responded beautifully. Here is Sizemore. Runner goes. Throw down is no good into center field. Hamilton will stay put. And the stolen base for Josh Hamilton. And it's obvious that part of that pregame talk in the American League locker room was, boys, get ready to run because we're going to run on the combination of whoever is on the mound and whoever's behind the plate for the NL. Stolen base number four, and uh, none have really been that close. 1 and 0 is the count from Heron to Sizemore. There's a strike. Grady Sizemore is pounding the ball with more authority this season. Career high 28 home runs. Sizemore has 23 so far this season. 1 1 pitch is in the dirt. Grady checked his swing. 2 and 1. Aaron trying to get around the leadoff hit by Hamilton. Fastball is a little up. And they count three and one. Manny Ramirez started the game in this fifth spot in the lineup, was 0 for 2. That is fouled out of play off to the left. Full count now on Sizemore. Guys put together a nice run in a Cleveland uniform. Back to back seasons, the first Indian in franchise history to hit 20 doubles, 10 triples, 20 homers, 20 steals. Consecutive seasons. He can do it all. 3 2 pitches right down the middle. 93 mile an hour fastball. Sizemore was frozen out number two. The designated hit man. And it's up to Milton Bradley. There's the night for Bradley. Walked, stole a base in the second, reached on an error, then was picked off in the fourth. And he gets under one to center field. McClouth is there to his right. We go into the seventh inning. Two nothing, NL on top. Back after this from your local Fox station. Carlos Quinton, who has had an amazing first half for the White Sox, takes over and left. Josh Hamilton is finished for the night. 
And Joe Nathan, who is one of the most underrated closers in the game, takes over with his 27 saves. He can bring it as Braun comes up empty, and that's strike one. Ryan Braun so far tonight, 0 for 2. He struck out and grounded out. Joe Nathan, uh, the stopper for the Minnesota Twins, who are once again, and I say once again, out of nowhere, a game and a half out in the American League Central behind the White Sox. Nathan, a former starter, became a closer at the beginning of 2004, and since then, he's number two in baseball to Trevor Hoffman in total saves. He has only 20 blown saves in his career. He's at a 90% conversion rate, which is number two all time, minimum 200 save opportunities. And a check swing. Braun goes around, one out. And let's go down to Eric Karos. Eric? Thanks, Joe. Third All-Star appearance for Matt Holiday. Got to be in the parade today. How did it feel? Good. You know, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm just glad to, to be a part of uh, the last All-Star game at the stadium. And the parade was fun, and, and to get a chance to finally get a hit and, and a home run, uh, something I'll remember forever. Well, you've hit a lot of big home runs in your career. Where did this one rank? Pretty, uh, pretty far up there. Uh, you know, I hadn't had, had a hit yet in the All-Star game, and to hit a home run here at Yankee Stadium, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Thanks. Back to you, Joe and Tim. All right. Thank you, Eric, and thank you to Matt Holiday, who is now in his third All Star game and goes deep. That was the first run of the night. National League got a run in the sixth inning. It's 2 0, and now McLeod has his first at bat since taking over for Fukudome in the fifth. Papelbon is getting loose. And this is shutdown mode for. The National League somebody's going to have to run into a mistake pitch to get something done against either Nathan now or Papelbon Francisco Rodriguez or Mariano Rivera that's into center Sizemore to his right two out. Chevrolet brings us what has become an all star tradition tonight's all star game MVP award will be handed the keys to a Chevy Tahoe hybrid the 2008 green car of the year go to Chevy dot com and see how Chevy has your bases covered when it comes to technologies that go from gas friendly to gas free. A look at the Tahoe hybrid as Russell Martin steps in for the first time tonight. Two out, nobody on in the top of the seventh. Matt Holiday is obviously a candidate as we sit here in the seventh of a two nothing game. Ball one outside. It is rare for Russell Martin uh, of the Los Angeles Dodgers to suit up and not get in a game. He's played more games over the last two and a half years than any other catcher in the major leagues. Converted third baseman and a guy who can run, throw, and handle a pitching staff. A 1 2 3 inning for Joe Nathan. And it's time to stretch here at Yankee Stadium. We are in the middle of the seventh inning of a two nothing game with the National League on top. Single tallies in the fifth and sixth in the NL on top two nothing. And now fans we ask you to please rise and remove your caps as we honor America. Fans, we ask you to please rise and remove your caps as we honor America. Here to perform God Bless America tonight, please welcome Warner Brothers recording artist Josh Groban.
guide her and guide her through the night with a Josh Groban with God Bless America. Good game, this All-Star game, the 79th edition. 2-0 National League. Morno, Kinsler, Veritek coming up. The two runs tonight, a home run by Matt Holliday, 2-0, the National League on top. Ryan Ludwig of the Cardinals takes over and left for Ryan Braun, and Edinson Volquez is on the mound for the National League. Morno, Kinsler, and then Veritek, the scheduled hitters. That's down and in, 2-0. Volquez has been tremendous. We showed you that number one ERA in the National League, 2.29. He's 12 and 3 for a Cincinnati Reds team. He comes into the break four games under 500. Morneau rips a base hit into right. And the American League has an extra base hit as it gets past Corey Hart in right center field, a sliding try. A likely straight double by Morno. And here's the play by Hart as it just kept staying away from him, and Hart could not cut it off. Justin Morno was in a position to look for the fastball, and that's what you have to do in order to hit Volquez effectively. Probably the best changeup in the game, which has really become the pitch of the islands down in the Dominican Republic. Volquez gets a visit from Russell Martin. And the batter is Ian Kinsler. Mariano Rivera starts to loosen. We're only in the bottom of the seventh. Papelbon has been up. There is action in each bullpen as we play here in the bottom of the seventh. Kinsler, it's his first at bat. Leads the league in hits with 134 and is number one in the AL, hitting 337. Up the middle, right at the shortstop Tejada. Over to third goes Morno. And the batter now will be Deonor Navarro to bat for Veritek. So the ground out off the bat of Kinsler. Navarro will pinch hit. And Terry Francona is down to one bench player. And that's Carlos Guillen. Started to say earlier that it's different for the players as well with this game being played at Yankee Stadium in its final season. Navarro takes low. We've had no cancellations. Everybody has shown up, and even those too hurt to play, whether it's Soriano or David Ortiz, Kerry Wood, 
there here to take part in the celebration as well. Soriano, a former Yankee, a 1 0 pitch to Navarro. Pulled the string, did Volquez, and the count 1 and 1. That's a changeup. We talked about it being the pitch of the islands. Interesting article by James Wagner in the Wall Street Journal of all places about uh, how that pitch, because of the influence of Pedro Martinez, Mario Soto, has become the pitch for young Dominican Republican players. It's fouled off to the right. The count stays one and two. And the reason for that is risk management. It's a lot easier on the arm to teach a young 16, 17 year old pitcher how to throw the changeup than it is the slider or the curveball. Deanna Navarro is hitting 83 points better than he did a year ago. Hit only 227. He's at 310 and representing the Rays. The second place Tampa Bay Rays a half game out behind Boston two and two. Not only hitting but handling a very young pitching staff. Young starting rotation everybody 26 years old or younger for the Rays. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Still two and two. Navarro was part of a three way trade which brought Randy Johnson to the Yankees. That was before the 2005 season. Traded to L.A. and now playing in Tampa Bay, Florida. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at third, one out, and a tailing fastball gets Navarro. Two down. Good pitch from Edinson Volquez. It'll be up to Drew. The 2008 All-Star Game on Fox is sponsored by Prescription Flomax. By DirecTV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. And by G2, the new low-calorie hydrator from Gatorade. What a pitch from Volquez. Jumped back over the inside corner, and now J.D. Drew takes low ball one. Tailing fastball, Russell Martin setting up inside, and there's the tail to it. Joe Girardi, manager of the Yankees, former catcher for the Yankees, Cubs, Rockies, catching in the bullpen as Drew fouls a fastball straight back one and one. I thought Joe left that position forever. You can always go home again, Tim. Don't go back, Joe. Please don't go back. K Rod, Frankie Rodriguez getting ready from the Angels for the AL in the bullpen oh. as Drew takes ball two. JD Drew has had an outstanding season in the second that David Ortiz went down at the end of May. Last day of May, J.D. Drew stepped up, hitting the number three spot and one player of the month for the month of June with his 12 home runs. 2 1 pitch is ripped into right at the wall. This ball is gone. Tie game, two run shot. J.D. Drew, first time All Star. Valdosta, Georgia. He waited 11 years for his first All Star at bat. Home run to tie it. Second season with the Red Sox. And he ignites that AL bench with that shot to right off Volquez. He hit 11 home runs in his first year with the Red Sox last year. He's already hit 17. This season. And he is the 15th player in the history of the All Star game to go deep in his first All Star game at bat. Last one was David Wright in 06. He's on the bench tonight for the National League. Young is fooled, and with two out, the count's 0 and 2 on Michael Young. And this game has hit the refresh button with a 2 2 score.
National League has been very close recently during this stretch, but they have not won since 1996. Michael Young, the guy Tim at the plate, is one of the reasons why the American League has been on this roll with a game winning hit off Trevor Hoffman a couple of years ago in Pittsburgh. Volquez gives up the home run and comes back to strike out Michael Young. But the damage is done here at Yankee Stadium. In front of a ton of Yankee fans, it's the Boston Red Sox right fielder who ties it with a two run shot. Let's go to the eighth. Deonor Navarro pinch hit for Veritek. He stays in the game, does the catching, and Jonathan Papelbon will take over on the mound. He was greeted with a round of boos as he made his way in from the bullpen. He made some headlines here in New York because of what was perceived as a slight against Mariano Rivera. Daily News had this on the back page. Papelbon. Ken Rosenthal was there and I want to get his take on what was said and how it played out in the media after he had his interview leading it off is Miguel Tejada first at bat of the night for Tejada strike one Kenny you were there it didn't read to you when Papelbon was talking as him being disrespectful to Mariano Rivera did it no not at all at least during the part I heard during his 50 minute interview session. Papelbon actually was respectful. He said he knew that players had to wait their turn, and he knew that Mariano Rivera should close, but obviously it was taken a different way. Here's a little flip shot into right off the bat of Tejada. Drew drops it but gets it back in, and this crowd is all over Jonathan Papelbon as he pitches here in the eighth. Yeah, I mean, it was an innocuous remark. I mean, he already, in that same interview, called Mariano Rivera the godfather of relievers. So respectful. I don't understand it. Beyond that, Ken, you and I were down there when he was talking to some members of the media. He was hot today when he showed up at the park. Yes, he was. He said that Daily News back page headline really soured his experience. During the parade, his wife, who was pregnant, was hearing from the Yankee fans, and he just was unhappy with the way it all played out. Now he's hearing it from the Yankee fans as Ugla steps in and is way late. As the crowd here chants Mariano strike one on Dan Ugla and his first at bat. Rivera standing not getting loose yet in the bullpen for the American lead. And here's what we talked about if you're the NL you just blew a two nothing lead. And now if you're going to get runs it's going to be against the likes of Papelbon Francisco Rodriguez and or Mariano Rivera. Oh and two on Ugla. He may be one of the best hitters you at home have never heard of as he has played for the Florida Marlins and all this guy does a former rule five pick from Arizona is pound home runs he can hit too far inside that's ball one. Adrian Gonzalez on deck. Now they chant overrated. And a strikeout from Papelbon on high heat to quiet the chant of overrated one on one out. Papelbon with that fastball saying, if you think I'm overrated, get a bat. Here's a guy who just racked up his 100th career save. He's a young guy, Papelbon. 27 years old, and he has already been thrown right into the fire and saved three of the four wins for the Red Sox in this past World Series against the Rockies. Here's Gonzalez with David Wright on deck. Runner is going. Throw down is into center. And Tejada, the go-ahead run at third with one out. It'll be a stolen base and then likely an error on Navarro. 
which puts the go ahead run at third base with only one out and Adrian Gonzalez at the plate. Excellent base running by Tejada, not only with a good jump, that ball thrown to the third base side. Tejada makes it to third easily, infield in for the American League, but Navarro never had hold of the ball. Tejada, who has been rejuvenated in his first year with the Astros, is at third, one out. And a 1 0 to Adrian Gonzalez of the Padres is popped into center. It drifts into left field with a win. Quinton comes up ready to throw. Tagging coming to the plate to Hada, and the National League is back out in front. Into left center field, and it drifted off the bat of Gonzalez, sliced to the left fielder. Quinton and his throw was late to the plate to Hada. A single, a stolen base, an error, and he scores the go-ahead run. Quinton does what he can on the throw. Throw a little bit to the first base side, but to Hada on a nifty piece of base running, circling the bases with the go-ahead run. Here's David Wright. Batting for Pujols, who was two for three while he was in there, takes a strike on a 96 mile an hour fastball. So now for manager Clint Hurdle, he has Brian McCann on his bench, and Christian Guzman, the shortstop in the Nationals. Off the end of the bat. David Wright in the hole 0 and 2 in the bottom of this eighth inning. The American League will have Quinton. Who said 22 home runs. Then Creedy. And then Sizemore. The closer for the San Francisco Giants. Brian Wilson is set to go. 0 2 pitch. On the outside corner, the inning is over. And this crowd serenades Papelbon on his way back to the dugout. An error played a big role in the go ahead run. Wilson will take over. MLB at Home is presented by Flonase Allergy Relief. Get 24 hour all in one allergy relief with Flonase. The 2008 All-Star Game on Fox, sponsored by Sharp Aquas LCD TVs. Change your TV, change your life. By Heineken Premium Light, share the good. And by the new AT&T, your world delivered. Carlos Quinton is first up against Brian Wilson, who unleashes a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. He's the National League saves leader with his 25. He has that ERA. Got a save on Sunday at Wrigley Field, and this is a guy who was drafted late as he's overthrowing here and missing badly 2-0. Tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by the DirecTV HD Starship, your ticket to the most sports in HD. 24th round selection in 2003 was Brian Wilson. First time All-Star had Tommy John surgery, and now here he is. Breaking ball hit off the end of the bat into center and into the glove of McLeod for out number one. So with Girardi catching Rivera in the bullpen instead of out on the field, it's time for the winning game code in tonight's Aquafina Make Your Body Happy Sweepstakes. The winning code is 118905. If you have this code, you've just won a trip to the 2009 MLB All-Star Game in St. Louis. Congratulations and thanks to everyone for participating. Here's Carlos Guillen, who is pinch hitting for Joe Creedy, who was 0 for 1 while he was in there. And Terry Francona is out of bench players now. He told us he was going to save Guillen in case this game went into extra innings. But here he is getting him into the game in the eighth. 
down by a run with one out in the inning. Yeah, your question was uh, to Terry, do you feel compelled to get everybody in? He said, I feel compelled to keep Carlos Guillen out of the game until he needs them. Well, he needs him now. He followed it up by saying, I'm not sure that he's the guy who deserves to stay out of the game, but the reason why he wanted to keep him around was because he could play anywhere defensively. Right. And he has done that at the big league level, longtime shortstop. First base, third base this season alone. He's now at third with Miguel Cabrera flip flopping with him. And he's at first, one two pitch for Detroit. That's fouled straight back. 72 mile an hour pitch from Wilson. It is closing games for the Giants. Billy Wagner getting loose for the National League and for the Giants, even though they're 15 games under 500, they are at the All Star break, only seven games out behind Arizona in the NL West. Out of play, still one and two. Hey, while we have a quick second, Major League Baseball did an unbelievable job. Getting the stadium, of getting Sixth Avenue and the parade ready, and making this celebration what it needed to be, and this the final season for Yankee Stadium. We thank so many who are in the Major League Baseball front office. That's a little bit high. Tim Brosnan, Chris Tully, Bernadette McDonald, Brian O'Garro, Chuck Torres, Marla Miller, Dewey Gong. And they help us week in and week out, bringing you the game of the week on Fox and then the postseason in these midsummer classics. Here's a 2 2 pitch, fouled back and a good rip. Great show before the game, great show during the game. Here at Yankee Stadium, and by the way, if you don't know, all season long, we've asked you to vote for the Bank of America greatest moment in Yankee Stadium history and we will reveal that here in the bottom of the eighth one out nobody on two balls two strikes Kean full count he's had a good at bat on deck is Sizemore And Brian Wilson is getting everything he could have hoped for coming into this game. A one run lead, bottom of the eighth. Trying to keep it that way. 3 2 pitch. Guillen strikes out. Chased a high, hard one, two out. Fox Sports and Bank of America present the greatest moment. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. Well, that speech was delivered in 1939. Lou Gehrig knew he was dying. The public did not. When he made that speech on the 4th of July, Lou Gehrig Appreciation Day here at Yankee Stadium. We thank Bank of America MLB Banking and helping us celebrate the last year at Yankee Stadium. To learn more about MLB Banking, log on to bankofamerica.com backslash MLB. Pitching change, two out, nobody on, and Billy Wagner coming in. With two out and nobody on, Billy Wagner takes over and uncorks a 95-mile-an-hour fastball way up to Grady Sizemore. One run, National League lead. Base is empty. Sizemore at the plate, and he's out in front of that pitch from Wagner. One ball, one strike. Hard, hard to believe he's out in front of anything with the way Wagner is throwing. Billy Wagner, the only left-hander in the bullpen for the National League. Evan Longoria, I had said it was Guillen. Longoria is the last piece of the puzzle down there for the AL, and he's on deck. So Francona is going to empty out that bench here. Either in the eighth if we continue and it looks like we will as Sizemore is on the tying run aboard and Milton Bradley the DH will be lifted for Longoria. So Longoria the rookie who's put together a season 
that has already seen him get locked into a long term deal about what two weeks after he was called up by the Tampa Bay Rays and those home runs 16 53 RBIs and he plays the heck out of third base for Tampa Bay. How odd is it to see pitching coach Bob Apodaca who's the pitching coach for the Colorado Rockies out to talk to Billy Wagner. Normally a manager during all star competition will go out there but Bob Apodaca is out there and now Brad Lidge is up and throwing. Glenn Hurdle told us before the game Lidge will be the closer. Morno on deck. Left handed hitting first baseman. But now the battle between Wagner and the rookie Longoria. First pitch inside ball one. Evan taking over for Bradley who was 0 for 2. Reached on an error. Walked. Stole the base. Was picked off. Tying run at first. Two out. And Longoria with a count even one and one. By the way I mentioned all those people with Major League Baseball Debbie Timon is the Yankees head of marketing and promotions the point person from this organization has done great work as well and pulling off this celebration at Yankee Stadium good game 3 2 National League on top 1 1 from Wagner that's strike two In the ninth inning, the scheduled hitters, Aramis Ramirez, who has yet to bat in this game from the Cubs, Corey Hart, same story with Corey, and then Ryan Ludwig. Three guys who will get their first at bats of the night. Stealing second uncontested is Grady Sizemore. An important stolen base, and now a hit can tie the game from Longoria, who has a 2 2 count. Most short relievers do not have good moves to first base, and Billy Wagner is no exception. Grady Sizemore stealing second base uncontested. Tonight, the American League is 1 for 11 with runners in scoring position. That one hit was a two out two run shot off the bat of J.D. Drew to tie it in the seventh. The two two Longoria hooks it down the left field line. It is fair. In the score is Sizemore. It's a double for the rookie Longoria and it's a three three game in the eighth. What a year for Evan Longoria. The Rays on April the 12th. Down and in, slider it looked like. Just fair. An important steal of second by Grady Sizemore. It was uncontested. And that means he scores as that ground rule double hopped out of play. And now a slow tap. Barehanded pickup by Wagner goes to the bag. And Morno is retired. Wagner comes on, allows a hit by Sizemore, a stolen base, and a two out game tying RBI double by Evan Longoria, a rookie. There's the steal. There's the double. 3 3 as we go to the ninth. You wouldn't accept an incomplete job from anyone else. Why accept it from your allergy pills? Flone is sensitive. Nothing stronger, nothing gentler. Nothing lasts longer. Flonase Sensimist, 24 hour non drowsy allergy relief. Carlos Guillen stays in the game at third base. He pinch hit for Joe Creedy, struck out. It's a 3 3 game, ninth inning, and Francisco Rodriguez deals the first pitch to Aramis Ramirez, and he fouls it out of play off to the right, strike one. Ramirez hitting for the first time in this game and the same will be true of Corey Hart who is on deck and then Ryan Ludwig in the number seven spot. The American League is out of position players. They still have Soria Cheryl Casimir in their bullpen and obviously Mariano Rivera. 
Francisco Rodriguez is on pace for a record setting year. 38 saves on the season. Right. Dempster, yeah. both in the eighth. He's getting loose. Now a starter with the Cubs and his teammate, Aramis Ramirez, went after one up and he's in the hole one and two. The major League record for saves in a season set by Bobby Thigpen in 90. 57 saves. High and tight, two and two as that straightens up Ramirez. Rodriguez with his 38 saves. He is only 26 years old. 2 2 pitch in the dirt, full count. Gary Francona has emptied his bench. Clint Hurdle has not. He has Guzman. The switch hitting shortstop left on his bench. And he has Brian McCann. Very good hitting catcher from the Atlanta Braves. 3 2 pitch is in the dirt and a leadoff walk. That gives the National League life here in the ninth inning. Game changing plays brought to you by Sharp Aquas LCD TVs, the official HD TV of Major League Baseball. Sharp Aquas, change your TV, change your life. The stolen base by Tejada. At the top of the eighth, paid off immediately. The uncontested stolen base by Sizemore, who scored on a ground rule double with two out by Evan Longoria. Both guys who stole second came in to score. And now Guzman will come off the bench and pinch run for Ramirez. And we've had six combined stolen bases in this game. Combining for a record. Corey Hart voted in online. Last man added. Could he be a hero for the National League? 0 1 pitch is flied into right. The park will hold it as J.D. Drew drifts back and squeezes out number one. One on, one out. The batter will be Ryan Ludwig. Here's a guy who is a great story from the St. Louis Cardinals, and here comes a great story as Francona will take the ball from Francisco Rodriguez and hand it to Mariano Rivera. Takes over, trying to keep it tied in the top of the ninth inning. One on, one out. Perfect and save opportunities this season. And the records he has set while wearing those pinstripes. Ryan Ludwig first against him with a flashbulb popping strike one. All of those flashbulbs with a pitch from Rivera, who has 466 career saves. As he takes over in the ninth inning of this All-Star game. Ludwig takes high. Ryan Ludwig on the other end of it is a 30-year-old outfielder. He has more RBIs than his teammate Albert Pujols at the break. Let's go Yankees cheer. Ball two. Ryan Ludwig in a four-year span 
endured a fractured hip, two knee operations, a broken arm, wrist surgery, and ulcer. Two years ago was a triple-A all-star for Toledo, and now he faces Rivera in the house that Ruth built, and the count is even two and two. Good eye, full count. Ludwig was in the minor leagues at the start of last year, and he's been in the minor leagues for parts, at least parts of nine seasons. The 3 2. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw down, double play to end the inning. Strike him out by Rivera. Throw him out by Navarro. Good tag by Kinsler. Bottom of the ninth at Yankee Stadium. Tie game. Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera sharing a moment. How many times have you seen Derek Jeter watching Mariano Rivera from the dugout? Not often. Not often. Jeter played until the sixth inning. And now Ryan Dempster, who's a second time All Star. As Guzman stays in the game, he's at third base. Dempster takes over and fires a fastball strike to Ian Kinsler. Second time All Star is Dempster, but the last time he was in the Midsummer Classic was in the year 2000 with Florida. Moved back into the rotation this year with the Cubs, and he has been outstanding. Just suffered his first home loss this past weekend. Started 10 and 0 at home. Prior to this year, last time he was a starter was in 2003 with Cincinnati. Coming out of the bullpen, Kinsler tried to check his swing. He could not, and he's in the hole one and two. Kinsler, then Navarro. And then J.D. Drew. Dempster is trying to send this into extra innings. A frightening proposition, by the way, for the National League. Because of the arms left in the bullpen, but maybe even more so for Terry Francona of the AL because he's out of position players. Right. Here's the 2 2. Kinsler hits one off the end of the bat foul. The New York Yankees go to Boston a week from this weekend. And I think the booing of Papelbon tonight has heightened a rivalry that does not need to be heightened anymore. That's the way I look at it from, from Papelbon's standpoint. An American League win could help soothe that a bit. From a Red Sox fan standpoint. Good start for Dempster as he strikes out Kinsler to begin the ninth inning. Good. Tight breaking ball from Dempster to get Kinsler. And now Deanna Navarro, who threw out Guzman, trying to steal second to end the top of this ninth inning. Toning for his earlier error and for the Tampa Bay Rays, well represented tonight with Evan Longoria. Coming up with a big two out RBI double in the eighth inning to tie it. Navarro 0 for 1. Takes ball one. This Ryan Dempster is one of the real good guys in the game. Uh, he really is. Terrific personality. A guy who loves to have fun. Loves his job. And there's a lot of action out on the mound when he's in a game. One ball one strike. Loves to impersonate Harry Carey. <laughs> and is great at it. He comes to the ballpark to have fun on days he's pitching. Now that he's back in the rotation he's all business for his manager Lou Pinella. Here's a 1 1. Navarro checked his swing 2 and 1. Time running against him.
on two and one. Navarro fouls it away. Two balls, two strikes. So Dempster is used here in the ninth. That means Marmol is left. Brandon Webb, Brad Lidge, and Aaron Cook for the National League. Lincecum is also on the list, but unavailable going to the hospital with flu-like symptoms before the game. So they came into this game a bit shorthanded, especially since three of their pitchers were starters and had worked on Sunday. Navarro strikes out. 96 mile an hour high heat. Two up, two down, and here comes J.D. Drew. Well, the stage is set for Drew, who hit that line drive home run in the seventh inning, and they cheered the Red Sox outfielder when he tied the game. This is the fourth and final All-Star game in this park. Final year of Yankee Stadium before they move across the street. And it's Drew representing the Red Sox who could end this night, win it for the American League with one swing. One ball, one strike. Most home runs by a player in an All-Star game is two. The last one to do it, Gary Carter, who was part of the celebration prior to tonight's game. Back in 1981. That game in Cleveland is Drew Waits for a high fastball three and one. On deck is Michael Young. That game in 1981, after a 52 game strike by the players, and really tried to soothe baseball after that, uh, that horrible strike of 81. That was not a 3 1 fastball, it had a wrinkle on the end of it. And it's a full count on Drew. Two out, base is empty. And Drew takes strike three, and we are going into the tenth. How about Ryan Dempster coming out of the bullpen and striking out the side in the ninth? Tenth inning, bottom part of the order coming up for the NL. Tied at three. How about that all-star game fact? Ten extra inning games. The National League is 9-0-1. That one is tight on Nate McClough for Mariano Rivera. Last extra inning game was that tie. And the whole this time it counts. The winning lead in the All-Star game getting home field advantage in the World Series is Aaron Cook and Brad Lidge, depending on what happens here at the top of the 10th inning, start to get loose. It's another classic in this stadium. And the National League trying to break through for the first time since Last winning in 1996, McLeod fouls it. Nate McLeod has shown a ton of power this season. Not a big guy, as you can see. First full season in the big leagues. The 2-2. And a foul off his foot keeps him at the plate. Tell you, Joe, that, that was an interesting shot with Brandon Webb still on the bench and not in the bullpen for the National League. Okay, so let's go through this. You've got Webb on the bench. They're trying not to use him. The right. American League has Scott Kazmir, and they're trying not to use him in the ballgame. Right. 
That means the AL has George Sherrill, the lefty, and Joaquin Soria, the right-hander, left, and no position players. That's just high in a full count on McLeod. Meanwhile, in the National League bullpen, we just used Dempster. Marmol is left. Lidge. And then we showed you Brandon Webb. McLeod breaks his bat and fouls it. So hopefully he brought more than one with him to the All-Star game. Soria starts to get loose, and here are Yankee Stadium facts. Over 6,700 Yankee games, 148 Hall of Famers have played on this field. Three perfect games, all by New York Yankees, 11 no-hitters, eight by Yankee pitchers, and 26 World Championships. Nine were clinched here, and all coming after the Yankees picked up George Herman Babe Ruth. 3-2 pitch, McLeod strikes out looking. He didn't need to get a new bat. <laughs> Second strikeout for Rivera. Well, there is no way to prepare yourself to face a pitcher like Mariano Rivera. There are no pitchers like that in the National League. In fact, there there have been no pitchers like that really in the history of the game who can get away with one pitch, a cut fastball, and move it from inside to outside to both left-handers and right-handers. Oh, just overpowering stuff for Russell Martin. 0 for 1 since entering the game back in the fifth, and he was way late. That's why all those pitchers earlier were asking Mariano about his cutter during batting practice. <laughs> we saw Halliday doing it. Casimir was listening in. Couple of opponents from the AL East. On deck is Miguel Tejada, who at one point in his life was an All Star Game MVP. The 1 1. Strike 2. And there it is during batting practice just before the team picture was taken. Mariano Rivera talking to. Roy Halliday. Here comes a one-two pitch to Russell Martin. Gets out in front and jerks it foul. Still one and two. This is why you ask a guy like Mariano Rivera how he throws that cutter and what he's done. He has three saves to tie a record in All-Star Game play. And all those postseason saves, 15, 10, and 9 from the Division Series through the ALCS and the World Series. 34 in all during his postseason career. And when the run started with Girardi still a catcher for Joe Torre, Rivera was the setup man for John Wetland. A 1 2 to Russell Martin. And a pretty good at bat being put together by the Dodger catcher. Wonder if Joe Torre had any words of advice for his catcher heading here to Yankee Stadium with a thought about a possible matchup against Mariano Rivera. As I said, there's no way to prepare yourself, either from Joe Torre, and I know Joe's listening in right now. I guarantee you he will. Agree with that. There's no way to prepare yourself to face Rivera. Down and in, two and two. Last time the National League won an All Star game, Joe Torre was in his first year as manager with the Yankees. 1996. 2 2 pitch. Line drive is a base hit through the right side. What a good at bat by Russell Martin. It's knocked down by Drew and Martin, who can run, went around first when he saw that ball hit the deck, but then stopped one on one out. You just cannot help but be impressed by that at bat by Russell Martin. That cut her away, and Russell just takes Rivera to right field. Feisty at bat by Martin. That's how Russell put the brakes on. Just took a seat. And here is Miguel Tejada.
Former All-Star Game MVP. He's been an All-Star with the A's. He's been an All-Star with the Orioles. And now an All-Star with his third franchise in his first year for the Houston Astros. Runner is going. Ground ball is up the middle off the bat of Tejada. First and third, one out. Russell Martin, the catcher from the Dodgers, was on the move, and Tejada bounced his second hit right up the middle. That's the one thing you do not see off of Rivera. You rarely see a hit and run. Mentioned that Martin is a fast runner, and that was a late break by Michael Young at shortstop. I don't think he saw that ball real well. Normally he's moving toward the bag. Of course the second baseman was covering. So Young holding his position. So what turned into what would have been a double play had Young been covering ends up a first and third situation for the National League. And now Dan Ugla looks at a strike. It was an eight pitch at bat. For Russell Martin against Mariano Rivera. He battled, he got a hit. He took off. He's 90 feet away. Ugla in his second All Star game. Joaquin Soria getting ready for the AL, but now it's Rivera and Ugla in the 0 1. Ground ball to the second baseman. Kinsler flips out over to first. Double play. And this game stays tied. Rivera keeps on doing it and gets the double play off the bat of Dan Ugla. What a game. Rivera appreciates the help behind him. Bottom of the 10, tie game back after a word from your local Fox station. Situation where Miguel Tejada did not want the second baseman to tag him, so he slows up. And Kinsler, with the presence of mind to go to shortstop, and Michael Young with a strong throw. They've done it with the Rangers all year, and the double play combination for Texas turns a very important double play. Just getting ugly by half a step, and the double play. Prevents a run from scoring, and now Aaron Cook, who already has a career high with his 11 wins, deals and a ground ball up the middle. Ugla kicks it. A two hopper up the middle off the bat of Michael Young, and Dan Ugla to his right, after just bouncing into the double play, does this. Trying to get rid of it too quickly was Dan. Ball hit the webbing, and he comes up empty. That is the second error committed by the National League, and this one starts the bottom of the 10th in a 3-3 game as Carlos Quinton, who leads Major League Baseball in game-winning RBIs this season, steps in. So far, 0 for 1 in this game. He entered in the 7th. Hard hit and right under the glove of Ugla. Going first to third is Young, and the winning run is 90 feet away. Right at Ugla, smashed to Dan Ugla, and right under his glove. Now think about the last three batters in this ball game. Ugla grounded it to the double play from Kensler to Young and the first base, and now two straight errors to open the bottom of the 10th inning, puts runners on at first and third, and nobody out for the American League. Wow. So Dan Ugla. Commits back-to-back -back errors. Here comes Clint Hurdle to talk. And let's go down now to Ken Rosenthal. Ken? Dan Ugla tonight was fulfilling the dream of his father by playing at Yankee Stadium, Joe. John Ugla grew up in Schenectady, New York, about 145 miles north of here. In the 1950s, he would come down with his grandfather by train, come to the, see the Yankees with Mantle and Berra and all the greats. And all he wanted was to see Dan play at Yankee Stadium. Didn't happen in 2006. Dan had an infant right hamstring. Almost didn't happen here because he's got a sprained left ankle. But here he is, and 
cannot have turned out any worse so far. So far, what has happened is they're missing the scoring chance at the top of the inning. He has presented the scoring chance for the American League here in the bottom of the tenth. And it will be Carlos Guillen at the plate, 0 for 1, struck out in the eighth with a chance to win it. Ted Williams has the only walk-off hit for the American League in All-Star Game history. 1941. A three-run home run in the ninth inning off Claude Passo. The American League won seven to five at Detroit. The National League has seven walk-off hits. And if it's going to happen here in the bottom of the tenth, it will not come off the bat of Guillen, who will get the walk to load the bases and bring in Grady Sizemore. One of those rare times in a game where you intentionally bring the outfield in. Not only is the infield in, but think about it, a sacrifice fly and the game's over. So an outfielder positions himself where he can, from a flat-footed position, throw the runner out tagging and trying to go home. So in this stadium, which has in so many ways been like our Coliseum, the history of this country, the Yankees starting to play here in 1923. After acquiring Babe Ruth, moving away from the polo grounds, building this stadium, the first triple deck structure to be called a stadium, with the clock right at midnight. The bases are loaded, nobody out, and the American League 90 feet away from yet another All Star game win. Infield in, outfield in, Sizemore takes a ball. The American League has won the last 10 straight decisions. We had the one tie in 2002. Trying to extend that streak. The 1 0. Sizemore to first. It's a foul ball. That is the home plate umpire's call till it gets to the bag. And it was Daryl Cousins, the crew chief, who called it foul. Strike one. Clearly foul. It's Adrian Gonzalez defensively at first for the National League. Aaron Cook in a jam. Dan Ugla and the rest of the National Leaguers praying he can get out of it. 1 1 pitch. Sizemore to Ugla. Throws to the plate. Down to first. It's low and safe. And Ugla was very deliberate. Made sure of the out at the plate with a speed of Sizemore. No chance to turn two in the end. Well, if, if you made two errors in a row at Yankee Stadium in the last All Star game, that'll make you deliberate. And how about the play by Adrian Gonzalez down at first? This saves the game. It does. In between hop, nicely done. So the force out score it 3 2 with the first baseman throwing home. Sizemore doesn't get it done. And here's the rookie again, Evan Longoria. Winning run is Quinton at third, one out. Now the infield can go back and hope for the double play ball. And a ball inside from Aaron Cook. Evan Longoria with a two out RBI double in the eighth inning to tie it now could win it in the bottom of the tenth. To third Guzman comes home out. Everybody moves up other than Quinton who's forced out at the plate and that is out number two. Score at 5 2 with Guzman throwing to the plate. And then Russell Martin got hung up with Quentin coming down on him. Well, Quentin is trying to take the catcher out. You see that so often that a base runner will take the shortstop of the second baseman out of a double play. The same thing applies when you could do that to a catcher. The unusual thing is you don't often see it in an all-star game. Just a little tap to the back of the right foot. 
And now it's bases loaded, two out. And Morno is at the plate. He could win it with a hit. He takes a strike from Aaron Cook. And this would be one of the more remarkable innings that a pitcher could turn in if Aaron Cook can somehow get out of this. Bases loaded, nobody out, and Dan Ugla hoping that Cook can finish off this 10th inning. Morno, slow roller, tough play. Tejada throws. We're still tied. <laughs> what a play by Miguel Tejada, who's doing everything he can tonight to get a win for the National League. We go into the 11th inning. What a job by Aaron Cook. Two errors by Ugla. It doesn't matter. Let's go to the 11th in Yankee Stadium. Grand Central Terminal in New York City, Manhattan. And up above here in the Bronx, tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by the DirecTV HD Starship. Get over 130 of your favorite channels in HD this summer. Whether you're in Midtown or Downtown or the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side, anywhere across this city and across this country, if you're tuned in, you're watching a classic game this all star game 79th version of it is Joaquin Soria from the Royals takes over as we are in the 11th inning a 3 3 game and the job that Aaron Cook just did to keep it 3 3 was remarkable and Joe I don't think it's premature to ask the question are we looking at another tie like we did in 2002 in Milwaukee well, I know Bud Selig is here and that would on a night like this be everybody's worst nightmare but again the American League is out of position players as Gonzalez is on to start the 11th you can reinsert a catcher if someone were to get hurt but there are no other position players available and then pitching the pitching is getting interesting because neither one of these two managers whether it's Terry Francona of the Red Sox or Clint Hurdle of the National League side want to turn a pitcher back to their team after the All Star break. And I guarantee you that's at least been part of the conversation down in those dugouts doing something that they shouldn't have been asked to do. Right. And it's not talking out of school to say that the Tampa Bay Rays wished and hoped that Scott Kazmir would not be used tonight in this game he's with the Rays and obviously in the same division and only a half game behind Terry Francona's Boston Red Sox as he is one of the front men in that young rotation with the Rays that means that the only other pitcher available to the AL if you take Kazmir off the board is George Sherrill who's a closing left hander with the Orioles other than the man on the mound Joaquin Soria that is it and, and Soria and Cheryl are both one inning pitchers Kashmir by the way was on the disabled list earlier in the year for about a month with Tampa Bay one ball two strikes on David Wright second at bat of the night for him and he strikes out for the first out here in the 11th. So he's had two at bats and he strikes out. He was the roster replacement for the injured Alfonso Soriano. There's Casimir on the left and George Sherrill on the right. They're the only two left and Terry Francona wants to go through this game and not use Scott Casimir. Who knows if he will have that luxury that choice to make right one on one out Guzman takes a strike over the inside corner Christian was a pinch runner for Ramos Ramirez in the ninth and was caught stealing by Deanna Navarro to end the top of the ninth so he gets his first chance to swing it and he is in the hole and two Guzman came into the break hitting 313 seventh best average in the National League and number one in the National League with 126 hits. He 
Pops one into right center field. Going to get it is Grady Sizemore. Two out. Back to first is Gonzalez. He was there with nobody out. He's there with two out. And Corey Hart will walk to the plate. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball, the Red Sox visit the Angels. Padres take on the Cardinals or the Phillies battle the Florida Marlins. Check local listings for the game in your area. Our coverage begins Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific and high def right here on Fox. Here's Corey Hart. Fly to right his first time up. And he takes a ball from Soria. On deck is Ryan Ludwig. Some have left. Most have stayed here at Yankee Stadium as we are now playing into Wednesday morning. 12-11 on the scoreboard clock. 2 and 0 is the count on Corey Hart. Now that they've attached the significance of home field advantage being awarded to the winning league in the All-Star game, you start talking about ties. I get you drift. You going to have a home run hitting contest <laughs> or what? 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed by Hart, two and two. Have a free kick to figure something out. Maybe a dance off. <laughs> but these managers don't want any part of where this thing is headed right now unless somebody pops one. And it won't be Corey Hart. He flips one into right. JD Drew waits for it. A leadoff hit by Gonzalez. He is left stranded. That is only six runners stranded on tonight by the NL. Bottom of the 11th, tied at three. Bobby Mercer, longtime Yankee, died on Saturday at the age of 62 years old after a 19 month battle with brain cancer. For Bobby Mercer, not just a longtime Yankee, was with New York from 65 to 74, and then again from 79 to 83. Played from 65 to 83 overall, a five time All Star, 252 home runs. As Kinsler lines one into center for a base hit. But Tim, a former broadcast partner of yours, an announcer here with the Yankees for 23 years, and one of the sweetest men you could ever meet. I mean, uh, when when someone passes there is you know the very very few people about which nothing bad can be said and that is the greatest tribute about Bobby Mercer. He will be missed and a big part of the Yankee family is missing on this celebration at Yankee Stadium here tonight. Deanna Navarro is at the plate. Winning run is at first with nobody out after the hit by Kinsler, his first hit of the night. And Navarro takes a ball, showing a bunt. It's Navarro now, then J.D. Drew and Michael Young. Guzman is about even with the bag at the start over at third, and Adrian Gonzalez holds against Kinsler at first. This makes a lot of sense. A straight sacrifice to get Kinsler to second. Who may then try to steal third? The honor Navarro waits for a 1 0 pitch. Swinging, so they abandon the bunt, at least on that pitch. And it counts one and one. DeMarlo Hale is the third base coach. Louis Alice is the first base coach for manager Terry Francona. And it would be the simplest of signs on this night with these teams getting together and Navarro getting the signs from Hale as to what to do at the plate. A check on Kinsler and Cook trying to keep Ian. 
honest over at first as we mentioned earlier Kinsler is fifth best in the American League with 23 steals and he's been caught only once all year. There he goes a pitch out Martin's throw in time for out number one Kinsler didn't agree with a call but that is out number one here in the bottom of the 11th Ian Kinsler caught stealing. So instead of sacrificing him to second allowing Kinsler to try to steal third it looked like he was in there that right foot let's see I don't, I don't think, think he made the tag him. I don't think he made the tag. Kinsler knew it second base umpire is Tom Hallion. Meanwhile the count has gone to three and one and another look. Well, it's a swipe tag by Tejada. He never tagged it. Here's a three one to Navarro. Three and two. Ninety three mile an hour fastball from Aaron Cook. We saw last October pitching for the Colorado Rockies. There is Brandon Webb going down to the bullpen as ball four is low to Navarro, and the winning run is on again, this time with one out. Eric Karos is with us, and he was down in the dugout. He witnessed Brandon Webb going over to talk to Clint Hurdle, and now after spending the game in the dugout. He has volunteered his services to go down and pitch. He was not really on the active list. He was here, obviously available, but it was Clint Hurdle's instruction to try and avoid using it. One on, one out. Drew bounces one up the middle, a base hit. Navarro will hold at second as J.D. Drew has his second hit of the night but again because the American League is out of bench players the honor Navarro who does not run well out at second base is the lead runner and that could play a role here in the bottom of the 11th as Michael Young will try to recreate what he did a couple of years ago in 2006 in Pittsburgh of Trevor Hoffman the game winning base hit. Since 03, Michael Young has a 357 average with runners in scoring position, highest in the big leagues. And he takes a fastball for strike one. This guy, Tim, is just a professional hitter, professional player. Defensively on the bases and at the plate. In his ninth season with the Texas Rangers, the 0 1 pitch outside. He's had 200 hits, 90 or more RBIs, and four straight seasons. A 300 career hitter, as we showed you, outstanding with runners in scoring position. Lead man is Navarro. One out in the 11. That misses for ball two. Two and one. Remember, this followed the leadoff hit by Kinsler. He was out stealing. On that call, it's second. A walk. To Navarro, a hit by Drew, and now a 2-1 to Michael Young. Up the middle, base hit. Here comes Navarro. McLeod throws to the plate. Here it is, and out to keep it tied. Second out of the inning as Navarro is thrown out by Nate McLeod from center field. What a play by Russell Martin, the catcher. An in-between hop. The throw beating. A strong throw for McLeod. Watch the in-between hop. And watch blocking home plate by Russell Martin. You talk about a tough play. 
great play by Martin. Wow. Unbelievable. Again, you look at that play and watch the foot of Navarro come in, and the question is, when did the glove hit his leg? It was awfully close. Out is the call, and it's still 3-3. What a play. Look at that hop. And Navarro is tagged as he goes by. McLeod throws him out. Now second and third, two out for Quinton. Three out of the last five outs picked up by the National League defensively have come at home plate. Four outs at the plate in the 10th. A tag out here in the 11th. It takes a hit from Quinton to win. We mentioned the last time he was up that he has the most game winning hits in the big leagues this season with 13. Can he do it here on the 15th of July? The 2 0 pitch from Aaron Cook. Left side. Guzman makes the play, throws for the out. What a play by Christian Guzman to his left as he got the high hop. Through on the move across the infield. But here's the play the throw from McLeod, the tag by Russell Martin, and we are going to the 12th. Twelfth inning now, coming up on 12:30 in the East, and Ryan Ludwig is first up for the National League against Joaquin Soria. Ludwig and the Cardinals played a home and home with the Kansas City Royals this year, so these two have faced one another this season. The 1-0 pitch is shot foul off to the right. Mentioned earlier that Ryan Ludwig checks into this game with his 21 home runs. He's been on a tear since he found out he was headed to the All Star game. He had been in a rut. He made the squad, and since then he has gotten hot again as he takes low in the count two and one. Two one pitch is outside three and one as Joaquin Soria is asked to pitch another inning. He allowed a leadoff hit to Adrian Gonzalez in the 11th. Got around it. Aaron Cook into and out of trouble in the top of this in the bottom of the 11th and now Ryan Ludwig starts the top of the 12th for the walk. In a game that was absolutely flying by early, the 79th All-Star game, Evan Longoria with a game-tying RBI double in the eighth, Adrian Gonzalez with a sack fly, J.D. Drew with a two-run shot in the seventh. Here's McLeod getting a bunt down, first base side, it's perfect, the shovel to first save. Kinsler a little late getting over and the flip from Morno was a little high and McLeod muscling beat it. There was a hesitation on Morno's part because he thought that Soria was going to feel the ball but flying down the line was McLeod and he is safe. Moments hesitation on Morno's part. I think he thought Soria was going to field the ball, and McLeod beats it for a hit. So McLeod, who threw out Deanna Navarro at the plate moments ago in the bottom of the 11th inning, is on with a base hit following the walk. And now it's Russell Martin who has been a big piece of what's going on here tonight for the National League. He pushes a bunt to first. Morno fields it. It may have gone foul, but he takes the out, and the runners advance to second and third. And the National League's happy that Morno made that decision because that ball definitely goes foul if he lets it go. But of course, I guess you take the out like the three points in football. Take it.
So the feed to Kensler going to the bag, and here's a better look at it right down the line. That ball checked and went right. But the play was made, and now Tejada, who's been outstanding, both offensively, defensively, with his legs, stealing a base, he's done a little bit of everything. Will be intentionally passed to load him up. And look who it's up to again. Dan Ugla. There's ball three. Brad Lidge is getting ready to try and close it if the National League grabs a 12th inning lead. So the bases are loaded. Ugla had a rough, rough couple of moments earlier in this game. He took over in the sixth. As you look at this All-Star game fact, this being the longest game with regard to time. But it was Ugla who came up in the 10th inning with first and third one out, bounced into an inning ending double play. And then moments later, made back to back errors on a ball hit by Young. This one scorched by Quinton. Eventually, the National League walked the bases loaded, and Aaron Cook did a fantastic job of getting out of it. And now Ugla. Goes after a high fastball and comes up empty strike one. Ludwig the lead runner at third. McLeod and Tejada behind him. The 0 1. Strike two on Ugly. And Joaquin Soria now trying to get out of trouble. With Adrian Gonzalez, a left-handed hitting first baseman on deck. The 0-2. Yeah. A breaking ball. Ugla fooled, and he strikes out for out number two. Talk about a knee buckler. Look at the knees of Dan Ugla. <laughs> What a curveball from Soria. And so now two out in the inning. Ugla slams his helmet down, and Terry Francona is going to make the walk out to the mound. Adrian Gonzalez is the lefty, and George Sherrill is going to come out of the bullpen for the American League. Who's left down there? Scott Kazmir. Bases loaded, top of the 12th. Two out, tied at three. With the pitching change, the only reliever available to Terry Francona now is somebody who he wanted to avoid using, Scott Kazmir, for the American League in the bullpen. Meanwhile, it won't matter if George Sherrill doesn't do his job and get Adrian Gonzalez. It's a tie game. Bases loaded two out and Gonzalez takes a strike. Cheryl is an interesting story. A former specialty reliever and a lefty is taken over as the closer for the Baltimore Orioles. Got off to a great start. Has struggled a little lately. And here he is with no margin for error. Coming out of the bullpen throwing strikes. It's 0-2. Bases loaded two out. It was bases loaded one out. Ugla struck out. How about Cheryl coming out of the bullpen with a sax jam and striking out Adrian Gonzalez to keep it 3 3. As we go to the bottom of the 12, we'll come back after a word from your local Fox station. Aaron Cook back to work, and Guillen hits it into deep left field. Back at the wall. It is off the wall. Played by Ludwig, and the winning run is its second on a leadoff double by Carlos Guillen to start the 12th. First pitch swinging, and a double over the head of Ludwig in left. 
tough thing about this play for Ryan Ludwig was that there's no trail guy like a center fielder to come and back up the play. So you have to kind of keep it close. And once that ball caroms back into left field, it was just a matter of whether it was going to be a double or a triple for Guillen. Carlos not a fast runner and stops at second. Now it's Grady Sizemore who is one for three since entering this game in the fifth. He could end a long night of baseball. And Cook gives a look back at Gian at second. Joe, you mentioned Grady Sizemore's power. And can you believe Corey Hart's playing as shallow as he is in right field? He is playing for a single, thinking that if the ball's over my head, the game's over anyway. So why not play shallow? Winning run at second, nobody out. 12th inning, and Sizemore hits it to Ugla, knocks it down, gets the out. Over to third is Guillen, one away. So again, 90 feet away is the winning run for the American League, and again, Dan Ugla has a tough time coming up cleanly with a ground ball. Sizemore advances the runner. The infield comes in. And here's Evan Longoria, who bounced into a force out at the plate his last time up with the bases loaded. Takes a strike from Aaron Cook. Longoria with a two out RBI double to tie it in the eighth. Had a chance to end it and win it in the tenth with the bases loaded one out. Bounce to third and Guzman who's never played third by the way in the big leagues threw home to get the out. That's a little bit upstairs one ball one strike. Infield is in for the play at the plate. Longoria grounds the third. It's a foul ball. What a play by Russell Martin anyway. But it's a foul ball. This guy is a magician. You talk about picking it. He picked the throw from center field from Nate McLeod. McLeod. And now this ball, of course, Martin does not know whether it's fair or foul. Obviously, it's foul. The throw by Guzman. An in between hop again. He's got the umpire to worry about the base runner and the bat. And he still made the play, but the ball was foul. It's pretty impressive. Wow. How about those hands? <laughs> I'm telling you. Meanwhile, it's a one-two count on Evan Longoria. And a strikeout for out number two. Good pitch down and in by Aaron Cook. And what a time for his first strikeout as he works in his third inning of relief. Boy, that was perfectly placed by Aaron Cook. That's a pitch that you normally don't get a swing through on. That ball down and in, but it dipped down so much that Longoria couldn't handle it. Now Morno will be intentionally passed. Which is fine, but this being an all star game, you've got a dangerous hitter on deck. And in this case, you've got Ian Kinsler, who has the top batting average in the American League, waiting in the on deck circle. Not only that, with a runner on at third and two outs, he can fly, and the, and the, the chances of an infield hit are much greater with Kinsler than it is with other players. It's the third walk overall, the second intentional pass handed out by Cook. And now Kinsler can win it. He has a league leading 134 hits. But so far tonight, one for three, took over in the fifth inning. After pinch running for Joe Maurer. He stayed in the game, has played second base from that moment on. 
Is this game going to end with Kinsler at the plate and Aaron Cook on the mound? Or will we go to the 13th inning? Morneau steals second uncontested. He at least swipes second and we'll see if it's credited with a stolen base and Morneau is not. Fielder's indifference. But it takes the force out away at second base and a ball hit up the middle. So why not take it? 1 0 pitch to Kinsler. That's strike one. You've got first base open with Deonor Navarro having a great year, but a less accomplished hitter on deck and a slower hitter and a slower hitter. So really, Clint Hurdle and his pitcher, Aaron Cook, can do what they wish with Ian Kinsler. And if he puts him on and walks him, I don't think he cares one bit. The 1-1. One, one. Left side, Guzman to his left. We are going to the 13th inning. A leadoff double by Carlos Guillen. Almost got out. A ground out, a strikeout, a walk, another ground out. Cook has been terrific. We're going to inning number 13. <laughs> With the national spotlight on it yet again, this stadium does not want to let go. What a game. As we go to the 13th inning, 3-3. Cheryl threw three pitches to get out of the 12th, and he blows one right by the bat of David Wright, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Wright, then Guzman, then Hart. <laughs> Down and in to David Wright. Talk about different styles. I mean, with Cheryl, his back is almost to the hitter. Nobody in baseball has as close to stance with which to start than George Cheryl. 17 home runs during the regular season so far for David Wright, who has homered in an All Star game, did so in his first at bat. That was back in Pittsburgh when he went deep. At PNC Park. Here's a 1 2 pitch. A shattered bat and a pop fly into right center field. It will fall for a leadoff hit. David Wright is on to start the 13th inning, and Christian Guzman is coming to the plate. The outfielders are a little deeper than they normally would be playing because of David Wright's power. Talk about a jam shot. Looked like David Wright was almost thinking that that bat, the end of the bat, was coming back at him. Now another bunt situation. I can't remember this this many bunt situations in All-Star games. Cheryl steps up, doesn't throw. Well, just to assess the bullpen situations on each side, the National League is in a better position than the American League, to say the least. Pitch up and away. Not only does Clint Hurdle still have his closer, Brad Lidge, down there, he has Carlos Marmol, the terrific setup reliever for the Cubs, and if need be, Brandon Webb. While the American League is down to the last body down there, Kazmir, who has started to throw. And once Kazmir comes in the game, if that happens, then there is a distinct pitch count that Terry Francona has in his mind where he will let Kazmir get to it after throwing 104 pitches on Sunday and not go beyond it. Cheryl throws to second for the out. And Wright is forced on that play by George Cheryl. One out. 
Talk about extra inning defense from both teams. Now it's Cheryl's turn. Quickly pounces on it and gets a speedy David Wright at second base. Just to back up your point, you would have to go back to 1987. To find the last time in an All-Star game there were two sacrifice bunts. Wow. Here's Corey Hart. 15 home runs during the regular season, and Cheryl hops off. We meet with these managers prior to All-Star games and go over their pitching plans, which are obviously always subject to change as Hart fouls it straight back. But coming in, Terry Francona is under the instruction trying to avoid using Scott Kazmir. According to Terry, he said Kazmir's been great about it. But it obviously comes from an organization with a young pitcher who's been on the disabled list this sure. year. Who threw over 100 pitches on Sunday. The team is contending for the first time. They finished in last place nine out of the ten years they've been in existence. So Terry Francona feels responsible to make sure that he handles somebody else's pitcher the right way and the way they want him handled, especially a division rival. A new division rival. Very, very sensitive situation, no question. So again, if Kazmir comes in, the bullpen is empty, and there is a point at which Francona won't send Kazmir back out there as Corey Hart strikes out for the second out of the inning. So Hart is gone, and Ryan Ludwig will take over. Ludwig. 0 for 2 with a walk. There have been 383 pitches thrown, 29 strikeouts with runners in scoring position. These two sides combined 3 out of 27. Ball 1 to Ludwig with 21 home runs on the year. Went into Tony LaRusso's office. LaRusso sat him down and said, It's really something, isn't it? And Ludwig said, What? He said, I made the team, didn't I? And LaRusso said, yes, you did. And got up and gave him a hug. It's been a long road for Ryan Ludwig to get to this point. And when he found out, he hopped on his cell phone and texted his wife, Joni, who's pregnant with their first child due in November, and said, we did it. He's been there with him, and now here he is with a chance with one swing to be a hero. But he's not getting the chance as Cheryl has run the count to 3 and 0. Getting the chance is what Ludwig's all about. After serving time in the minor leagues with eight different teams. Starting with Modesto, California. Three and 0 the count. McClouth on deck. Right down the middle, 92 miles per hour, 3 and 1. Go ahead, run it first. Two out. A 3 1 pitch. Ludwig is jammed and he pops it up. Kinsler from his second base position squeezes it. And we're still 3 3 going to the bottom of the 13th inning. Who's coming up? Navarro, Drew, and Michael Young. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium. Well, this September, imagine the impossibilities when the television event of the season comes to Fox. Don't miss the premiere of Fringe. Tuesday, September 9th, J.J. Abrams, who's the co-creator of Lost, great show on ABC, and the writer of Transformers, they have built an all-new world of intrigue and adventure that will blow your mind. Fringe, Tuesday, September 9th. Right here on Fox. Monument Park, where all the Hall of Famers started their night, then onto the field. You can take the train just a short ride to the new Yankee Stadium. 63% larger than the current Yankee Stadium. 
They've had 1,500 construction workers on the job. The playing field dimensions will be the same as the current stadium. The backstop will be 20 feet closer to home plate. The signature freeze will wrap around the grandstands just like the old Yankee Stadium prior to the 1970s renovation. That freeze is replicated on what is the scoreboard wall out between the two grandstand areas in the outfield area above the scoreboard. As we move into the bottom of the 13th and Marmo who can be just flat out nasty but who has been struggling takes over in the bottom of the 13th inning. Marmol replaced Kerry Wood who is out unavailable with a blister. Breaking ball is chopped to second. Ugla has struggled but he makes this play has time with Navarro running one out. So Deanna is gone and the batter will be J.D. Drew against Marmol. Joe you talked about how Marmol has been struggling. The Cubs had a 7 to 2 lead in the top of the ninth inning on Saturday and the San Francisco Giants scored five to tie the Cubs ended up winning that game in the 11th inning. J.D. Drew comes up empty. Well Lou Pinella has sent him to the mound though Tim and you know as well as I do. That with that terrific average against of still 161. As Drew takes a ball he has a big ERA of 13 and a half since the 19th of June. If the Cubs didn't want him every other team would line up to get him. Oh yeah. He is a future closer. And is terrific. You can see how he hides the baseball. Very deceiving. The numbers are not good. His last dozen games the count two and one on Drew who has homered and singled and struck out in his three at bats that jumps off the inside corner three and one Casimir was getting loose and now as the clock strikes one. Kazmir has taken a seat. Breaking ball is in for a strike. Three and two on Drew. But there is activity out in the bullpen for the American League. There's Scott. One of the best young arms in the game. Three two pitch. Drew is out in front of it. Oh a bad hop. And Ugla can't make the play. He's made a couple of errors but that was a terrible hop that came up into the chest of Dan Ugla. That should be a base hit but because of the hop Dan tried to recover him backhanded. It's an error. And the third of the night for Dan Ugla. Ugla didn't get into this game until the sixth. He has six all year. He's made three tonight, two in the tenth, one in the thirteenth. But in his defense, that hop, that was all the hop and not Dan Ugla. I agree. Here's a pitch low to Michael Young. Watch down and right there. Ball comes up on him. Tried to recover, as we said, the backhanded. But the third arrow of the ball game on Dan Ugla. And the fourth error of the night for the National League. Now Michael Young hammers it one, one, one ball, one strike. Aaron Cook, by the way, was outstanding. Glenn Hurdle, I'm sure, felt more comfortable using his own pitcher in that situation of throwing him out there for three full innings. And he dodged into and out of trouble and helped Ugla get around. Those two errors in the tenth. There's strike two on Michael Young. The one-two pitch is too far inside, two and two. The three errors by Ugla is the most errors by any one player in an all-star game. Quinton on deck. Michael Young at the plate. Full count. Now Drew will be off. 
funny Aglo's three errors have come during a, a time in the game when it's been as good a defense as we've ever seen in an All Star game. With all of those plays at the plate, oh, terrific. ranging around the infield, making plays. Yep. The dig by Adrian Gonzalez at first. There goes no. Drew. Strike three. Throw down and safe. Good pickup and tag by Ugla on the end of it. But Drew is in with a steal, and now he's in scoring position with two out. Watch how the short, uh, the short hop at second base makes the glove come up, and that's why Drew slid under it. Watch the glove. It comes up to make the play, and Drew slides under it. Ugla did all he could, and Russell Martin's reaction, boy, he has been impressive behind home plate all he night. He really has. So there's Drew, the winning run at second, two out, and again, Carlos Quinton is at the plate. Representing the White Sox, he pops it foul. Back and out of play. Quinton last time up had a chance to end it and bounced out to third. Reached on an error in the tenth and fly to center to start the eighth. Good speed with J.D. Drew the man at second. Marmel throwing hard missing with ball one. On deck is Gian who led off the last inning with a double into left but was stranded good tight breaking ball strike two. How about this matchup the north side of Chicago against the south side. White Sox were swept by the Cubs their first time at Wrigley this year and then the Cubs went to cellular field on the south side and the White Sox returned the favor. You've got the Cubs leading the NL Central. You've got the White Sox leading the AL Central. And trying to hold off the hard charging Minnesota Twins who have won 19 of their last 25. First time since 1977 that the two Chicago teams have been in first place at the break. One two pitch. Quinton strikes out. And we are going to the 14th inning at Yankee Stadium. Music a lot tonight. <laughs> Yankee Stadium in its final season, as big a part of the story tonight as any singular player. And the greats who have called this place home Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, the 56 game hitting streak started here by Joe DiMaggio and the great Mickey Mantle. Just four of the legends Monument Park which at one time was in play here at Yankee Stadium now beyond the wall out in left center field the monuments the plaques George Sherrill back to work a cloud first up and he launches one into right back at the track J.D. Drew is there for out number one. Just got under it enough, and McClouth gave this crowd a rise here at Yankee Stadium, but it fell short. Looking fastball, he gets it, and a sigh of relief from George Sherrill. The National League and Matt Holliday, in particular, who homered into right earlier in this game, disappointed that that fell short, and now Russell Martin. It was one for two with a bunt, a hit, and he's flying to center, and he has shown the world just how good he is behind home plate defensively. Takes the ball. The 1 0 pitch. 2 0. Miguel Tejada didn't get into the game until the sixth. But he has been a big part of this one 
especially in the extra innings as Martin fouls it back. And it will get out of play. So Brandon Webb, who was also on that list of a Clint Hurdle, if you can avoid using him, do. Now he gets loose. Scott Casimir gets loose, who was on that list for Terry Francona. Tim Lincecum, who was maybe available for an inning left and was hospitalized with flu like symptoms. The San Francisco Giants right hander is Russell Martin flies one into right drew back to get it two out. So these two managers were a little short handed coming in and they are about out of bullets out in that bullpen now. Well, if you're wondering about George Sherrill he has now pitched the longest that he's pitched all year two innings. An inning and, and two thirds was his high coming into this game. With two out, nobody on. Here's Dehada. Strike one. Joe, remember, this time it counts. Yeah. <laughs> we think. We hope it counts. Telling you, the minute Casimir comes into this game, the clock is ticking. Yeah. Maybe no. they'll let the Hall of Famers play. <laughs> do you have Carlton's cell phone number? I do. Ground ball to the shortstop. <laughs> Young makes the play, and the inning is over. Bottom of the 14th. Who's coming up? Kean, Sizemore, Longoria. Back after this from your local Fox station. Just had our second seventh inning stretch in this All Star game as we're in the middle of the 14th inning. Derek Cheaters making fans happy by signing autographs during the game, and Brandon Webb takes over on the mound. He threw 108 pitches on Sunday. The big league's only 13 game winner. That's why he was on the list of don't use them unless you have to. Well, they have to. The only other pitcher down there now for the National League, and again, they do not have Tim Lincecum, who's sick, is the closer Lidge. Line drive is caught by Tejada. Hard hit, one out. But Tejada has just played a terrific second half of the ball game. And the field in. All over the place. Brandon Webb, who is in his sixth season in Arizona, is a third time All Star now. Started this season 9 0. Cy Young Award winner in 2006. And has the most wins in the National League since the start of 2006. And there's that power sinker. There is nobody in the game. Among starting pitchers who has a better sinker than Brandon Webb. The 0 1 skips in there. In case you're wondering, the longest All Star game, 15 innings in 1967. My partner Tim McCarver was two for two in that game. Don Drysdale, the winner, Tom Seaver with the save. And now, Mr. Lonely out of the bullpen is Brad Lidge, the closer from the Phillies for the National League. 2 1 pitch. Brady Sizemore over the top of that pitch. It's two and two. With one out, nobody on. 2 2 delivery. Sizemore fouls it. Again, Grady has been popping home runs at a personal record pace. <laughs> the 
and inviting right field. See Sizemore out in front of that pitch as Brandon Webb completely fooled him for out number two. And that ball went down like a screwball. You're right. I mean, Sizemore, after being ahead in the count, found it even and strikes out against Webb. It started with Ben Sheets, then Zambrano, Heron, Volquez, Wilson, Wagner, Dempster, Aaron Cook for three, Marmol for one, and now Webb. With two out, here's the rookie again, Evan Longoria. Longoria won the American League's internet vote. Takes a strike. Beat out Jermaine Dye, who was second on that list. And the 16 home runs that he has hit, the most home runs of the All Star break by a rookie since Tim Salmon had 17 in 1993. That is strike two. Two and two now on Longoria. Corey Hart, as you saw with the 8 million votes, got the NL nod. He's in the lineup now. and in this ball game in Longoria with his 16 home runs waits for a 2 2 pitch and strikes out two strikeouts in the 14th inning for Brandon Webb we go to the 15th what a game I'll say tied at three Tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by the DirecTV HD Starship. Get over 130 of your favorite channels in HD this summer. We are now into the 15th inning. Here at Yankee Stadium. And Dan Ugla gets another at bat. Hitting against Scott Kazmir, who was over 100 pitches on Sunday for the Rays. Meanwhile, the Rays, by the way, have lost seven straight and lost their top spot in the AL East. They're only a half game out. Kazmir started this season on the DL. You can see he's got the good fastball and the count evens. One ball, one strike on Dan Ugla. Ugla, then Adrian Gonzalez, then David Wright. 3-3 game in the 15th. That's strike two. A little more than 24 hours ago, Bud Selig was on David Letterman. And uh, one of the things that David did not ask Bud was, what if it's a tie tomorrow night? The one-two pitch. Swung on and missed. And a strikeout of Ugla. And let's say this. And I know we've talked about this plenty already tonight, but it's worth saying that we know Terry Francona well enough to know that whatever he has in his mind after talking with the Tampa Bay Rays and after talking with Scott Kazmir since they all got to New York, he has a number of pitches in his mind, and once Kazmir gets to that point, like it or not, that's right. Terry Francona will say enough. Yep. He will not send Scott Kazmir back to the Rays completely overextended on this night as he bounces one in there, one ball, one strike, and Gonzalez. Whatever the ramifications, there's really nothing for Terry Francona to look at in that dugout or on that lineup card. He is tapped. A 1-1. One, one. Two balls and a strike. Douglas struck out. Gonzalez, a ton of power, chases one, two and two.
Last year at the age of 23 Scott Kazmir led the American League in strikeouts with 239 the youngest to do it in the American League since Frank Tanana in 1975. He can rack him up a floater into left field and after going back coming in to make the catch is quick. How about more on Scott Kazmir? Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal. Joe, I exchanged text messages late in this game with Rays general manager Andrew Friedman, and he confirmed what Terry Francona said. The Rays' preference was for Scott Kazmir not to pitch in this game simply because he threw 104 pitches on Sunday, had the arm injury earlier. Their plan is for him to start on Saturday. Yeah, they want him to come right back and work on Saturday he will end up with no rest as you can see the ball just jumps out of his hand 95 miles per hour came up in the Mets organization for a brief while traded away and Tampa Bay organization got the better of that deal 1 0 pitch this guy's an all world talent and David Wright of the Mets is dropped to the dirt so how do you solve this problem of the possibility of a tie. You expand the rosters. You say you can't. Uh, a pitcher cannot pitch in the All Star game if he pitches on Sunday. If the All Star game is on Tuesday. I don't know. Here's a 2 0 now. I think that's part of it. I mean, these two managers came into the game, and for the National League, you know. Clint Hurdle was shorthanded with those starters, guys who could eat innings because so many of the good ones had worked on Sunday. There's a four pitch walk to David Wright with two out. Lincecum, who is just one of the most dynamic young pitchers to come along in a long while, worked on Sunday, got his 11th win at Wrigley Field over the Cubs. He was unavailable. Brandon Webb, who worked on Sunday, unavailable. Is Christian Guzman with a runner at first, two out. The other name is Dempster. Here's a ground ball to first. He worked on Sunday. That ball almost got through the webbing, the glove of Porno. We go to the bottom of the 15th inning. AL coming up, tied at three. Scott Kazmir is in the dugout after working a scoreless top of the 15th inning. He did allow the walk, but got around it. So now we're into the bottom half. Brian McCann takes over behind the plate. And an entirely new battery is Brad Lidge takes over on the mound. How appropriate, a new battery. <laughs> yeah. Didn't mean to say it, but this game could use one. <laughs> the longest game, 1967, All Star game in Anaheim. Tony Perez hit a home run at the top of the 15th inning to provide the National League with a 2 to 1 win. The longest game in All Star history, Catfish Hunter working his fifth inning on the mound, surrendered with the home run to Perez. And there's Tony five hours ago as Brad Lidge, who has been perfect. In save chances for the Phillies and was rewarded with a new three year deal after being traded from Houston to Philadelphia takes over. Morno has a count of one and one. So you've got Kazmir, the last man standing for the American League, and you have got Brad Lidge, who's the last man available for the National League. 95 mile an hour fastball, one and two on Morno. Kazmir coming into the dugout, and we saw him shake his head yes in response to something that Terry Francona asked him, and one would have to assume the obvious. Base hit into center, the leadoff man is on. Brandon Webb went one inning with two strikeouts. No more for Brandon Webb, it's up to Lidge. If the National League wants to have another at bat, and Morno starts it with a base hit to center. Here comes Kinsler after applause from Kazmir. 
Good hitting by Morneau. Expect Kensler to bunt. He's swinging and he comes up empty. Not only was he swinging, but the corners of the infield are not pinched in much for the National League. Guzman about even with a bag. Gonzalez holding it first. Another swing, another miss. It's 0 2. Deanna Navarro on deck. It's Terry Francona's played it the other way with the sacrifices. Why not try something different? Sure. Kinsler takes a fastball high. There is a concerned manager right there. And there's one in the other dugout as well. Kevin Euclid with his rally cap on. Here's a line drive into left that is caught by Ryan Ludwig. A little stagger at the start, but he comes in to make a diving catch for out number one. Scoops it right off the ground. Good catch. Landing on his left arm. So Kinsler hit it hard, but a fine play by Ludwig extends things. Are you kidding me? Well, we have seen it all here tonight. The Hall of Famer saluted before the game. Sugar free Red Bull for Kevin Euclid. Not wanting to add calories this late at night. And a strike is in to Navarro. Not bad for a guy who has. Uh, a slump buster power drink out. He had a couple of cases up in his locker the other day. It's almost like it's on cue, like he was listening to us. Here's an 0 1. Navarro takes ball one. Deonor is hitless. He has had four plate appearances. He's drawn one walk. 0 for 3. Then he was thrown out at the plate by Nate McLeod on a sensational tag by Russell Martin. That was back in the 11th. Navarro gets one off the end of the bat. Base hit into center. Morno will think about going to third but hold and that was the right decision. And now with two on one out. Here comes J.D. Drew. It's interesting the crowd here at Yankee Stadium I believe wanted Morno to go to third base but closing on that ball very quickly was Nate McLeod. And Morneau would have been out had he tried it. Here is J.D. Drew. He could be the hero. He could end a long evening and early morning of baseball. He has hit a two run home run. He has singled. He has reached on an error and stolen a base. He could end this with a hit. Bottom of the 15th inning, ball one. J.D. Drew hit his seventh inning home run at 10.54 p.m. On All-Star Tuesday night, it's now 1.33 in the morning. On Wednesday, a 1-0 pitch. The delivery from Lidge, one ball, one strike. Brad Lidge, like Mariano Rivera, as I mentioned, perfect on the season and save opportunities. This is not one of those. He's just trying to get it into the 16th. The 1 1 pitch, Drew. JD Drew could take his manager, Terry Francona, off the hook, allow him to exhale. Avoid having to send Casimir out for another inning. He can figure out Brad Lidge. Two on, one out, two on pitch is shot foul. Two and two. on at first and second. 
Morneau, the lead man, and that skips in. McCann, who is getting his first action, blocks it. That was a good play and an important play with one out. Very difficult to block fastballs in the dirt. You don't anticipate those balls being in the dirt. And think of the unfamiliar way that McCann has of receiving the ball from Brad Lidge. He's hit against him, but never caught him. And J.D. Drew ended 3-2 pitch. Fouled off the end of the bat. On deck is Michael Young. Morno and Deonor Navarro are the runners. Home field advantage in the upcoming World Series hanging in the balance. Three two pitch is in the dirt that loads the bases and Michael Young can end it. J.D. Drew is on base for the fourth time tonight in five plate appearances. And here we go again. Michael Young tried to end it in the 11th inning. And the great play by McLeod, the better play by Russell Martin to get Navarro at home plate. Bases loaded, one out. 3-3 three, three in the bottom of the 15th inning. Michael Young pops it up. Right field, Corey Hart. Morno tags at third. Here we go. Throw by Hart to the plate. Safe, this game is over. Morno scores. Terry Francona exhales, and the American League has won again, and they will have home field advantage in the upcoming World Series. And there is nobody happier in this park than Terry Francona. No, Terry Francona, not the only guy exhaling, he's got company. Avoiding having to play another inning. Corey Hart got his momentum going through to the plate. The tag by McCann was just late. Morno in just ahead of the tag in this game. Four hours and 50 minutes after it started is over with the AL winning it in 15, four to three. And that's how close we were to playing into the 16th inning. Kazmir is the winner. Lidge is the loser. And a hug from Terry Francona to Jim Leland to Brad Mills. And again, it's Michael Young who delivers the key RBI for the American League as he did two years ago in Pittsburgh. The American League has won the last 11 straight decisions, excluding that tie in 2002, and we came close to another tie here in 2008. Coming up, the presentation of the most valuable player on our Chevy postgame show. The Chevy MVP presentation is coming up. The evolution of Yankee Stadium. And let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. Welcome you to the Chevy All-Star Post Game Show on Fox, Chevy, and American Revolution. Four hours, 50 minutes. The time of game, 15 innings. Kazmir over Lidge. The American League is unbeaten in the last 12 All-Star games. They've won the last 11 straight decisions with that tie mixed in. You talk about a guy with relief. That was Terry Francona not having to send Scott Casimir back to the mound. When we come back, 
we will present the MVP award to the most valuable player of this All-Star game. Welcome back to the Chevy All-Star postgame show on Fox. Chevy, an American revolution. Let's go down to the field in Genie's Alaska. And Joe Buck, this is the city that never sleeps because they're constantly playing baseball, but this one has come to a close. We are joined by Commissioner Bud Selig. He will present the Most Valuable Player Trophy Award, the Ted Williams Award, to... It is my pleasure to present the Chevy Most Valuable Player in the 2008 All-Star Game to a very deserving J.D. Drew. Who happens to be wearing a Red Sox uniform right here in Yankee Stadium. Isn't it beautiful? Of course, joined by a Chevrolet North American Vice President Ed Peeper with another presentation for you. Thank you, Jeannie. And on behalf of Chevrolet, I want to thank all the great baseball fans that are left here tonight. You're the best. As America's brand, we had a great time sponsoring the red carpet parade and the game tonight and it's our pleasure jd to present you with the keys to a new 2009 chevy tahoe hybrid our mvp of mpg thank you and congratulations ready to give everybody here a ride home you, your, your first at bat, you hit a home run, and then you're walking off tonight with the MVP. Unbelievable evening, yes? Yeah, one of those uh, undescribable events. Uh, to be voted in by the players and to be in this position is uh, really an honor. I don't know, Joe. They were worried about a David Ortiz jersey being buried at the new ballpark, and they're sending this one off with a gentleman in, in a Red Sox uniform. We'll have to flesh that out. Joe Buck, back to you. All right, Jeannie, thank you, and congratulations to J.D. Drew. He hit a homer in the seventh. He singled in the 11th. Reached on an error, stole a base in the 13th, walked in the 15th. He didn't get into the action until the 6th. He was a big part of this one for the AL. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. For more information on tonight's game and the latest in Major League Baseball news, log on to FoxSports.com, powered by MSN. This week, Fox Saturday Baseball, the Red Sox take on the Angels, Padres, and Cardinals, Phillies, and Marlins. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific with a pregame show. For Tim and Ken and Eric and Kevin and Jeannie and everybody who set this up, it was a long night worth every minute of it. We say so long from the house that Ruth built.